Oh, I don't. Yeah, here we go. Welcome, You gotta unmute, brother. <laughs> Great. <clears throat> well, dude, at least you had it plugged in. Yeah, I, something something doesn't sound quite right, but um, I can hear you. I thought I'd be able to monitor sure. myself, but uh, who knows? So, how's your weekend going? It's going. It's going okay. Um, I've been, I've been looking forward to talking about this. This is a, this is a really good book. And then I I, oh, I thanks, put it man. away in the box, and I forgot to get it back out. Thanks, so, man. I appreciate it. I, I, I caught your review. You were uh, generous. <laughs> was I? Okay. Guys, I wanted to ask you about that, too. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Rainy night in Georgia. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it right there. And then your um, campaign is up on Zoop. Indeed it is. And I want to see how that's going. Brave tab. I always have to say the things out loud that I'm doing on. Uh, that's okay. Right. So <clears throat> five days left. Yeah, man. You're just $10 over halfway there. Yep. Um, do you plan on being on any other streams in the next five days to really because I think I, I believe if I remember you saying before that yeah. we have something in common where um, we have a hard time separating marketing from humility. Right. Yes, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Which is poison. It is. To, you know, if you're because that's one of the things I want to make sure I get over. It's it's one of the things that's kind of like held me back in, in all of the stuff that I've done in the past, like. You see that intro video, there's pinstriping, there's airbrushing, oh there's all this stuff. And I've and I've I'm able to do those things, but being able to really monetize it to the nth degree has always been an issue for me just because um sometimes you don't know exactly what it's worth. Cool frog is here. Thanks for hanging out, man. What up, dude? Yeah, cool frog's uh he's he's got a pretty cool uh stream. He does um he, he had his two hundredth two hundredth stream like two days ago. And um, congratulations, Stan. 
yeah, which is a trend I see happening. There's a lot more people that are going in with uh, locals and rumble. Oh yeah. Now, everything that I do on YouTube automatically goes to rumble. That's the way I have my rumble account set up. Same here. But even do you? Okay. Cause Oh yeah. 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 Cause the great delete is coming and a lot of uh, people in our circle really seem to be in denial about that. And we need to ha explore alternative platforms because mm -hmm. the great delete it's coming. It's coming. Right. And it's not like we won't be without a way to communicate with each other. We just won't be doing it there. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, I have a feeling they're going to end up taking their ball and going home and uh, the pendulum is going to swing in another direction. And they're going to be the ones that are just, I mean, it's one of the reasons I'm, I'm, I'm on Twitter is because that's where the fight is. Right. Right. You know, I mean, I can I can hang out on any one of these other um, any one of these other platforms all day and just be a echo chamber. Well, um, yeah, which is what we really don't want. Right. Right. As one of the problems with uh, with comics gate is the fact that we are a bubble. Right. Right. And <clears throat> what we need to do is we need to expand that bubble or attach that bubble to other bubbles. <laughs> yeah, so kind of like yeah. Analogy as far as it can go, but you know, find people that are in separate bubbles, but that are uh, whose ideals are very adjacent. Uh, right. Them. Yeah. Well, yeah, without a doubt. Um, and it is. I mean, I've I've only been into this for like maybe a year or two years, and I'm still trying to figure out who's who. Mm -hmm. And uh, like that one little piece of drama, which I even like hate using that word because. I mean, the only reason why I would pay attention to any of it is just so that um, I don't end up getting taken for a ride because I trusted my own instincts and they were not up to snuff. Yeah. But having said that, you know, um, it's like that thing. It's like, yeah, it's unfortunate. I would I, I want everybody to be able to uh, uh, to get along. Yeah, I mean, I'm that way too. Uh, you know, I'm an old punk rocker from the 80s, mm -hmm. but deep down inside, I am kind of a hippie. I'm like the least competitive person you will ever meet, right? I just want to like, like, hey, instead of like, you know, winning the race, let's all join hands and let's cross together at the same yeah, time. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, in some, in some cases, it should be like that. In some cases, yes. it should be like a relay race, but right. the um, having, having other people shill your stuff for you is always a a great like i plan on i plan on like i won't be happy until somebody calls me arrogant because I'll, i know like it's like it's like when somebody says um you're a sellout yeah you know i'm like well i mean it's kind of the point well it's oh, meta you know, movies and brewskis is in the chat what's uh, up what up yeah what's incidentally up, if, Matt? you can um you can throw that invite link out to whoever you want to yeah, I threw it in the uh, in the horror movie cl uh, club. Okay, good. All right, good. So, um, but anyways, let's talk about this thing because it's really, uh, really good. It's and it sounds weird saying this. I've had people say this to me whenever I'm done doing work for them. It it it's better. It was better than I expected. But I only but only that. because I was I I might have been a little bit um, predisposed to the six gun gorilla that I had read before we were talking about. In fact, do you want to, I'm trying to scroll up on the wrong thing. Do you want to give a little bit of that odd history? Because it is a little funny. It's very odd. It's very okay. odd. Was All I right. correct though? When like in my timeline and my review, I was like, didn't this happen at the same time? It did. The okay. same week. Yeah. The same month. Mine came right. out a week before the other one. I beat right. him, I, I beat him by a week, right? And, and that was the first issue. Yes. Right. And uh whew, boy. All right. Well, uh Six Gun Gorilla was a story that was originally published in a British pulp magazine for young boys called Wizard, interestingly enough. Yeah. And this is in 1939, and there's no author uh uh, uh credited. Right. So the author or authors are unknown. And the only reason that we even know that the story exists is because there was a book uh, that I can't remember the, t the title of that was written about uh, British pulp literature for boys. 
right? right? And that's where they were they were talking about this particular story. And the author mentioned this particular story, and it was something that just kind of I don't know caught the imagination of people, mm -hmm. and it certainly caught mine because when I came across that title, I was like, I need to read that, right? I need to read that yesterday. And that's when I discovered, much to my chagrin, that uh, there are only two copies left in existence that have been out of print since it, uh, 1939, that there are two copies left in existence, and both of which were under lock and key in a museum in London. See, that's one of the things I really like about your, uh, your style is uh, um, you research things. Oh, yeah. Like you're on your way, digging your way to China. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm very Chuck Dixon-y that way. <laughs> is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Chuck found... Dixon is like a big, uh, is a big research guy. I'm a real big research guy, too. It just makes my job easier, to be perfectly oh, yeah. honest. Sure. Uh, you know, even though you know you're not going to use like 90% of what you're reading, it, it gives you a certain, I don't know, comfort level. Right. Right. And, and, and well, yeah, I mean, the more you know, it's like having a, you know, if you're going to dive out of a plane, you want to have a big target, nice, big, soft target. The more research <laughs> yeah. you do, the, the bigger that target gets. Absolutely. And you can probably do a lot more with it, too. You're um, you have you have more rules and, you know, uh, you know where the, where the railings are and what you can bend before it breaks. Yes. Um yeah, here and here you're listed in here. Um, in this, this is a p. Uh, this is fandom.com. That's an article about the origin of Six Gun Gorilla, and you're here listed above. Boom a Studios. week later, thank you for fucking getting that right because a lot of websites don't. Yeah, yeah. In 2013, yeah. two of them came out at the same time: Long Days of Vengeance, an independent comic, which should have your name in it. Yes. This but line right here. Right. That's all right. Uh, I don't think so. I'm just saying, but, but then, uh, but, but this is, this is this picture right here. It's, uh, yes, that's from the cover. That's from the yeah. cover of that, uh, issue that from, um, 1939, uh, a, a wizard magazine. Right. 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 So yeah, that's, that was interesting to me. Um, and, and now you can actually read the actual story because oh, I wish I could remember his name, but he is a pulp scholar and he went to London to that museum mm -hmm. with a scanner and said, Hey, well, like, would you let me scan that? And luckily they were like, okay. And so he scanned it and you could find the original story as a PDF online very easily. And okay. I do recommend checking it out. Um, it's a lot of fun. Of course, it's very different from what I wrote, and it's very different from, from what, the Boom Studios uh, thing. Exactly. Yeah. Because the one thing that I and Cy Spurrier had in common was we were working from a title. That's it. Right. All the information that we had was just that title. Right. And it set off a firecracker in my head, and it set off a firecracker in his head, too. And so we kind of had the same idea, but then uh, Western comics were a very hard sell at that time. I guess they still are. And so he didn't do it as a Western. He did it as a science fiction comic mm -hmm. and then emphasized this is not a Western. This is a science fiction comic. And then he came after me because I did an interview where I said, well, you know, mine's a Western. His is, is a science fiction comic. It is, though. Yes. They grow I mean, it's it's not even it's not it's, it's it's not even debatable. Like what you saying it, you separating the two, because all it's going to do is like, okay, well, our comics are exactly the same, but by mine instead. Versus, they're yeah. totally different, right. so you should be motivated to get each one. Like that, right, right. Yeah. Like, because I, I felt that the comparison that I made was, I think maybe it was like nineteen eighty four or five right or six possibly I, I don't know somewhere in that neighborhood right where there were two james bond movies that came out at the exact same time the same song yeah one of them was a sean connery that was yes. uh, a remake of thunderball yeah called never that say was, never again. uh was that never say never again mm -hmm. and that came out the same so that that came out the same time as um shit i can't diamonds octopussy octopussy yes yeah i remember that um right and they both did well, right? Right. And I think so. I mean, I actually, I didn't, I hadn't, I don't think, I, I got, a, I got away from, uh, from James Bond after, after a little bit, but I believe you, you know. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, one of the great pulp characters of all time, of course, and I'm a big pulp guy. Right. Um, but I figured, okay, well, there's enough. There was enough room for both of them, and I figured, okay, well, I think there's enough room for two six gun guerrilla comics, especially when one is a western and one of them is a uh, science fiction comic. But the author didn't take very kindly to that and uh, slammed me. And said, "No, it is a western. It's blood and guts and, and blood and well, thunder." And I was just like, "Dude, dude, maybe, dude, you know, I probably didn't like being pigeonholed into one genre or another because, like I I pointed out for that little bit in my review, there's way too much stuff going on. Yes, and there's a thing that because it is, it's oh, it's a romance, and it's a this, and it's a that, and it's all these things. So if you're gonna call it one thing, you gotta call it everything, and it's gotta be everything to everybody. Yes, bye, bye, bye." Yes, and everything it has is. to be meta. Everything has to be winking at you, and everything has to be deconstructionist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Right. Now, it was obvious to me that uh, that his Six Gun Gorilla was a science fiction story set in the science fiction subgenre of mm -hmm. the futuristic blood sport. Yeah, right. right. And mm -hmm. so you have these people play, fighting in a futuristic blood sport, killing each other, and then they have uh, cameras implanted in their eyes, which is a gimmick that's from a uh, movie with Harvey Keitel called uh, Death Watch. Okay. Right? Um, Gee, this, is, this is what happens. I just start opening up tabs whenever you start talking. That's all good. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, and so... Uh, but yeah, he had I, that. I was, yeah. It was like a... a um, a, a, what do you call it? A reality TV show on another planet in another dimension or something like that. Right, right. And the gorilla wasn't a gorilla. And so the very first issue sold like gangbusters, did very, very well. The later issues, not so much. In fact, uh, a friend of mine sent me a picture. He found found them all in a uh, 50 cent bin. Right. And, and I posted that to my uh, Facebook page and Mr. Spurrier was not happy about it. Hey, you know, I mean, it's... <laughs> Hey, look, I look, I approached him first, right? Because yeah. I was like, look, this is messed up. And, you know, I guess he saw me as like a cock blocker or something. No, I, I, there's a, but there, there is a way to turn that into, into sales. Yes. I'll promote your book. You promote mine. Yeah. Holy crap. What are the odds? Yeah. Right. Of two six gun gorilla comics coming out at the same time. Okay. Yeah. We'll check them both out. And, you know, right. hope. Maybe you might like both. Maybe you like might like one and not like the other. But the only way you're going to find out is by checking them out. Yeah, I mean that is that's that's part of that that drama that just ugh, I don't like. Yeah, and and you know it was you know what it was most of all it was disappointing because yeah, right. I sent him a, a very friendly message and I was like, boy, man, this is crazy. Uh, are you going to be at the New York Comic Con? Swing by my table. And we can have a chat, and then afterwards, I'll take you out to like some of my favorite uh, places in New York City, and we'll have a pint or two or three, right? And he never got back to me. And then when I got to the New York Comic Con, I didn't see Six Gun Gorilla, Six Gun Gorilla Boom Studios version anywhere. Yeah, Nothing. right. And uh, you know, I think maybe he saw me as like st stealing his thunder or somehow messing up his IP or I, I don't a know. Threat, I, I don't a know. Threat. Yeah. Just a, yeah, a threat. I don't know. It's like, wait a second, dude, you're working, you're working for Marvel. Yeah. And That's like, thing, you're like intimidated it, by you like, you're threatened by me. Yeah. Right. Hey, it's, game, it's, game, recognized game. Well, well, yeah, well, look, this is the thing. It's kind of like, um, Oh God, it was this, this is really weird too, because the, um, first interview I did was with bleeding cool. Oh, and yeah. Yeah. And so I didn't know who they were. At that <laughs> it time. was a, it was a simpler, more innocent time when, well, when nobody well, knew who nobody was. Yeah. And so what happened was they published the interview and he got mad and a uh, quick aside when, uh, after the interview was published, the person who conducted the interview with me, uh, a fellow named Dean Butters from uh, Australia, yeah, fuck it, I'm gonna name, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna You're name names, names. right? Yeah. And Butters, that's good. He started sending me uh, threats, which, right? It was just like, yo, you better like <laughs> shut up about, you know, SJWs, or, or like, you know, we may have to cancel you, that kind of thing, right? Oh yeah, failed threats, and I was <laughs> just right. like, I was just like. Like, you know, oh, it's going to be, you know, it could be bad for your career. And I was just like, what career? 
Yeah. No one's what are you even talking me. about? What are yeah, you? No one... You're threatening to like cancel me. I haven't even gotten to a place where I can be canceled. Right. Like whatever, man. Although I did a little uh, Jedi mind trick because the thing about people like Mr. Butters is that they're not very bright. And so I just turned it on him. And when you just base, basically the thing, the way to deal with them is basically to just use a mirror, right? Yeah. Like to deflect like like their uh, their laser fire, right? Yeah. Right. And and so I was just like, you're bullying me. I was bullied as a child, and now you're bullying me, and now I'm triggered. And he went, blah, 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 and apologized profusely, and then I just unfriended him. It was like, I was just like, okay. Yeah, my I can't take any more of this. I have to unfriend you. For yeah. my own ment for my own mental health. My own mental health. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Dummies, man. Not bright people. Not bright people. You know. Do you want to um take a look at the video here? Yeah, absolutely. Because I, I was interested in who uh who did the work on this. Hmm. I'm gonna share that screen again. We're gonna make it make it big to our um awesome chat. Oh, by the way, uh, cool frog is uh saying that was 1983, and uh, that's when our good friend Metal Movies and Brewskies was born. So, hell yeah, yeah, that was a good year. Yeah, it was. I mean, the previous two had been even better. You know, best years ever for uh, fantasy and science fiction it was uh, 81 and 82. Let's see what we'll replay this. Well, all right, is tell me if that's too loud, would you? Okay, well, that sounds fine to me. Does it? All right. Yeah. Oh, Joe, Joe Lansdale. I still remember when you sent me that quote. We've all heard the stories. We've all heard the legends. Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday, Billy the Billy Kid. Kid. <laughs> but there's a secret history to the Old West. One that seems too strange to be true, but, well, we all know what they say about the truth. Big ape, very big guns, throwing very big holes, very bad people. I think the world is finally ready to hear the story of the strangest, the most startling Western hero of them all. Six-Gun Gorilla, Long Days of Vengeance. Man, that turned out good, didn't it? You got to unmute, homeboy. I know, I know. I'm trying not to. I didn't want to talk during the video. Who, um, who did the video for you? I, you know what? I can't remember his name off the top of my head. This was like this was like years ago. It was a friend of Adrian's. I was like, "Do you know anybody that does that can do motion comics?" Oh, and it was a friend of um. How do you say his last name? Cybar, Cybar, Cybar. Yeah, well, unfortunately, yeah, I, is uh, no longer with us. Was a awesome guy and so freaking talented. What do you mean, no longer with us? You mean uh, like in the big way, no longer with us? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he oh, died. Oh no, really? Yeah, he died a few years. He died uh, like two years ago. Huh. Yeah. Um, then whose Instagram am I following? Um, I don't know. Are you following his Instagram? Yeah, I mean, I was. I because part of, part of the <laughs> it's in the description of the. This is weird. It's in the description of the um, the review that I just did. Really. Is his I mean, unless it's somebody else, and there is there's two Adrian Sabars who do comic book work that look almost exactly like. 
Well, it could be maybe that it could be a member of his family. It yeah, could I hope that's students. I hope that's what it is. Uh, he was a teacher in addition to uh, you know being a freelance artist, right? And uh, you know, um, I actually found out from one of his students because I hadn't heard from him for a while, and then uh, the student the student um, got in touch with me and said, "Hey, like you know, where can I get the you know where can I get this comic? You know, it's like my 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 teacher drew it." And I asked, and he said, "Like yeah, he like passed away. He passed away a few months ago." And I was you know. Every yeah. victory yeah. from here on forward is going to be a little uh, bittersweet because of that. I was wondering why, um, and I, maybe this isn't the reason why, but I didn't know why the art had changed and you got uh, pressing to do the work. Yeah, because, because I was really growing. It was really growing on me. Right. And he was getting better, too. He was leveling up. And really? Yeah. I mean, yeah, like, I mean, I thought you meant like, okay, his talent was getting better. Yes, it was. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but you know, because he had worked for Marvel, he had worked for Dark Horse, he had worked. That, yeah, there he is. That's him. Yeah, yeah, that's um, oh, well, that's him. Yeah, I am. I met him at uh, the New York Comic Con. Uh, was it twenty sixteen? I want to say. Uh huh. A and um, it it was it was it was it was awesome to get to uh, meet him because we'd known each other for years already, and I just corresponded. And uh, he was just like this really warm, friendly guy. And I just felt very, you know, I, I had a tremendous amount of gratitude t towards him the way that any writer should towards an artist that does uh, beautiful work for them, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, their job is to make us look good. And a little bit vice versa, too. You want to give the artist stuff that they're going to enjoy drawing. Yeah. And, and, <clears throat> and um, you know, he had a very sort of cartoony style at the moment that I met him. Uh, he but was, he, yeah, and and I don't know how how was the book drawn? Was it chronologically from beginning to end? Um, because yeah. I noticed like some differences in some some panels in uh, like the middle of issue two versus the first chapter. Um, um, but that's yeah, that's that's what it seemed like. Which yeah. is, I mean, and that's going to be happening in my in my in my own book, right? I've got, I want to go from beginning to end and I want to use traditional um, clip studio, procreate, um, right. light boxing, some stuff and right. really explore all the different techniques. I don't want it to be a selling point, but you know, right. There's no reason it can't be. No, 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 not at all. Uh, you know, uh, the, the way I see it, that these, these are all just tools. Sure. And you know, why not use uh, the tools that are at your disposal? Um, have you, let's see, you got 12 claimed 18 on nine and 10. Okay. Yep. You're doing nine and 10. And also mm -hmm. I am not a double dipper. So there are a lot of people that bought the, um, the trade paperback, uh, that, uh, compiles issues one through six. So right. there's going to be, there's also a second trade paperback that's going to collect issues, uh, the, the remaining four in the uh, 10 issue arc. There is one or there will be? There is. It's right okay, there. There's which... At the $25 tier. Oh, uh, over here. Six yes. Gun Gorilla. Okay. The volume two. Yep. This guy on the, on the right. Okay. You can see my pointer. Okay. Yeah. 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 And because, you know, I, last thing I would ever want to do is double dip and have my backers, uh, you know, buy issues that they already have. What does the, well? It's yeah. I get it's up to them, I guess. But what's well, yeah. um, what, what kind of a burden does that put on you when you're trying to get it printed? Um, you're going to have so many runs of this, so many. So you've got a ten issue omnibus, and then the sign. Yep. yep. And then well, the ten you, issue omnibus. All of those are going to be signed. Because I'm handling fulfillment, and when I handle fulfillment, I'm oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was looking at the digital edition. All right, and then the fifty dollars right, right. signed omnibus, the floppy pack. Now, is when this is just a, an inside baseball thing for me? When you're getting these things printed, mm -hmm. are you getting these printed over again, or are these uh, books that you already had? Oh no, I, I have to uh, I have to put in a reorder. A reorder, so that would technically would that make that a, a second or second edition? 
or second printing? Well, if I, yeah, I mean, if I uh, used a new file and you I know see. put in second printing, right? Uh, because what I do is uh, I use Greco and uh, you know Comics Wellspring, and they always keep your stuff on file. Okay. And so, so they, they just have so, it, so they can just fire and forget. Yes. I yes. See. So if I run out of issues, for instance, which which I did on the last campaign, uh, which is why some people, a lot of uh, a lot of people's books were uh, a little bit late. But mm -hmm. if you get a late book from me, you're going to get something extra in there. You're going to get either if you ordered original art and you were waiting a long time for the original art, you're going to get two pages of original art. If you ordered a comic from me and uh, it took a little longer to get to you than it did the other some of the other people because I ran out of cut books and I had to reorder like a douchebag, uh, then you're getting like uh, a, an extra comic book or whatever and or whatever else I could throw in there. You know what I mean? Little convention flyers and stuff. Um, now, is this up? I, I think I looked and I'm not sure you can just answer because I'm going to be too lazy to go find it. Is yeah. this only exclusively up on Zoop? Yep. Okay. Yeah, it is. And now is this, did you have an issue with IgG or because well, I remember Pops talking about Slaughterville. They didn't like it because it was too violent. Well, here's the thing with IgG is we know that they're shadow banning our campaigns, right? Oh. That's been established. Uh, I think it was, God, because I heard about it through Kami Mark, but it was, oh, I'm trying to remember who it was that actually did the homework and uh, checked out their coding and everything and discovered that, yeah, they're shadow banning our campaigns. That's which is to say, uh, if you go to Indiegogo, you click a link that goes directly to the campaign, yeah. no problem. But you're never going to be on Indiegogo browsing and, co and come across one of our books. It's not going to happen. Huh. Yeah. So the, in other words, something like uh, Kickstarter, for instance, I did a little experiment with my very first Kickstarter campaign. I put my books up there and I said, OK, I'm not going to promote at all. And I'm just going to throw the campaign up there and see what happens. And that'll give me an idea of the people that just stumbled across it. And I made about three grand. Right. So wow. I was like, oh, OK. So, you know, and we, there's no reason why we shouldn't be using all platforms. Right. And I know some people and I found this very peculiar. I don't understand people feeling um, loyal. Yeah, to, uh, Indiegogo, but they yeah, are. I know Malin doesn't like to use Kickstarter. But yeah, he's very anti Kickstarter. He's also very uh, anti digital editions. I always provide a digital edition because mm -hmm. some people don't like having to pay thirty dollars yeah. shipping and handling. Yeah, uh, if they're outside of the United States, and I certainly don't like charging my backers thirty dollars right. for good shipping and handling. For a damn no, I would, I would probably want to have a digital edition up there too. But the one thing that he does that I find interesting is uh, he never goes in demand. And I think that has something to do with keeping the value of yes. the book that was sold. And, you know, just like anybody knows about like the basics cool of economics, the more of a thing you have, the less valuable each individual part is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Which is yeah, yeah. commendable. And then, Not you know, I would it, do, but. You know that 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 that's his uh, market strategy. It's been been working for him. So yeah. Well, I, I mean, but they can for for that um for that campaign, but he will bring them up again so that you can get issues one, two, and three, and like later campaigns. The more issues each book has, like you have here, there's a floppy pack of all ten here. Yep, yep. absolutely. Hmm. Because nine and ten haven't been illustrated yet. Because I couldn't do a campaign for issue nine and then a campaign for to issue 10 because there were a lot of people that didn't back issues seven and eight because they were like, oh, I'll just wait for the next trade, trade paperback. There's got to be some bell curve action there where you only get so far into it and you start losing backers because of that mentality. Yeah. Yeah, it which you know, and then I try to explain to them like, yo, there might not be an yeah. issue. There might not be another trade paperback if you don't back this one. Yeah, this has to be paid for in order to to exist. Yeah, exactly. Right, exactly. For us to make it for you, you know. Do you have an illustrator lined up? 
Oh yeah. Uh, okay. uh, Preston committed to issues uh, nine and 10 and nice. basically, you know, came in like a superhero and saved my ass. I would like to hear from him again, man. I honestly, I, I, I miss his, his, uh, his presence. He's got a, no, me he's, too. He's, he's got a cool, um, um, I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, I like his, I, I, I like his style. Oh, and well, he, see, he seems to just tear through this stuff. Yeah. You know, like even in clip, even in clip studio, when I'm sitting there and it's probably because you can undo things, right. you know, when you can go backwards, it gives you a hard time to go. It, it makes it hard to go forward. But, um, um, I've Works taken better. entire panels and erased them and started over again. Right. Uh, he works in traditional media. Like, yeah, I know. It's and he's exclusive. really good at it. Yeah, yeah. And because, of course, then he can sell the originals, like right. that Iron Maiden cover that he did for the uh, variant of the of, uh, of, uh, issue eight, Cemetery Without Crosses. Yeah, you know that, that was that was acrylics on canvas. It looks freaking amazing. That's and nice he's one. a rock star, and my goal has always been to get as much work done with him before he realizes that he's a. Well, there it is. Sorry, I was just trying. I'm I'm trying to get it so that it's. it's right. How do I do this? This. There you go. Yeah, yeah, that one. In fact, I'll take it's it. Out a, yeah, it's a wraparound. And there's CG um, Easter. Yeah, egg. there's CG lore oh. in here. I know you oh, are. Man. Get this. You're here. Yep. That's Preston. Yep. And there's other stuff too. In fact, Lit Devil to, to to the uh, to the left of Preston. That's Lit Devil. No, no, that's Lit Devil right there. Yeah. I always say the dwarf is Sim. Uh, it wasn't intentionally meant to be him, but it, it's still, you know. Yeah. Enough like him. Yeah, I like this uh, cantina scene here. But it's also it's that it's that um, what was it somewhere in a strange land somewhere land of ice and snow. Well, whose idea was that? That was Preston's. Was because, it really? Yeah, because when you're working with a, an artist of Preston's caliber, you mm -hmm. kind of let him do his own thing. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like when you uh, yeah. go to a sushi restaurant in Japan, and you let them. Yeah, in other words, you don't like go into the sushi restaurant and you've got like, you know, this guy who's 80, 80 years old and he's like considered like a, a living national treasure and mm -hmm. that sort of a thing. And you don't go up and just go, ah, oh, I'll have like uh, some of these, I'll have some eel, I have some. No. Yeah. You will shut the hell up and you will take what he gives you. Yeah. Right? Just like and, mama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not, I'm not saying that that's, Pre that was, that's Preston's attitude. That's my attitude. No, I get it. Right? No, I totally, yeah, I totally get it. Because you want to let the, and, you know. Well, I mean, because you would be, um, um, you would be uh, diminishing the experience otherwise. I, I think so. And so when I have an artist do, do a cover for me, I, this was with Vinny, with uh, Vinny too, with Vinny Tartamella, with the, uh, the trade paper pack that, that, you, that you've got there. Um, I'm just kind of like, okay, well, here are some suggestions and take them or leave them. These are ideas I've had for covers. If you, if any of those strike your fancy, use mm -hmm. them. If you can think of something better or cooler or something that you'd rather do, go and do it. And uh, the results are always spectacular. Yeah, I, I had finished the Shadow of the Kraken, and, and then we I, we ended up talking about a little bit on that horror on the uh, horror club. Yeah, horror yeah, yeah, it's really good. Um, but that was the, the the thing. The same the same with this is. Um, that um adrian and and then preston i guess is it's from the bottom up everything it's art and now he's doing the colors and inks and everything right mm -hmm. somebody else is doing the inks um, or the colors i mean when i get the pencils and this was the same same thing with adrian too when i get the pencils and I, I, I you know i don't know if other writers feel this way when i get the pencils they're so beautiful that I don't want to do anything with them. I kind of like, okay. I'm like, can we just like print it like this? Right. Because I don't want to see them marred in any way, shape or form. Is this, so, um, um, I'm, I, I could be, um, why this is going to make me feel terrible if this is the case. Is this Oliver from yes. 656? Yes, oh, it is. Man, I should have put, I, I gotta have, I gotta put him in the description of the last video then. Oh, dude, dude. He is fantastic. Uh, I wanted to do a artist's edition. That's to say a version that was just Preston's pencils and maybe with the word balloons. And right. 
What those are my did, favorite. I, I love those rough cuts. Right? Yeah. And so I was going to do that, but what Preston did was he kind of inked it himself in pencil. Mm -hmm. And then Ollie came in and he laid down those colors yeah. and they preserve absolutely every single uh, pencil stroke of uh, of Preston's beautiful uh, line work. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely gonna have to go in and edit that because uh, I like uh, Ollie deserves the uh, he yeah deserves he deserves the credit. And the boys from Six by Six man are. I know I have phenomenal. I haven't picked up one of those streams in a while and I, and uh, and I really should. But the thing is, is <laughs> well, they're a pisser too. Yeah. Well, yeah, they are. They're they're funny. Um, Hysterical. And especially when they start going back and forth in Spanish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and I'm like, man, I wish my because my son is an honor. He's a Spanish honor student. Nice. I'm like he would probably love this. He might even be able to get some of the jokes. Right, right, right. But yeah, those guys are those guys are funny. They're 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 a hoot. And what is up, Melissa Jane? Melissa Jane is here. What up, Melissa? Thanks for Thanks. showing up. Thanks for hanging out. We're talking about Seriously. Six Gun Gorilla by Brian. You tell me how you pronounce your last name. It's Chris Gow. Chris Gow. Yes. I, I made it sound like a cooking oil. Well, everybody gets it wrong, it's, which is I, totally I, fine. It, I am never butthurt over yeah. that. At first, it's I a rare like, name. What you it, really need in there is an I between the T and the G, so that you can get that extra that extra syllable in there. Chris to go, Chris to go. It's Chris, Chris go. Yeah. There's not very many of you, uh, by the no, way. No, there are. Right? Like I sent you that thing. I think there's like what 299 of you in the entire yeah. world, and all of you are in Germany. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes that's, that's absolutely correct. And, um, oh, except for there was a record critic, I don't know if he's still with us, named Robert Christ. I saw that too. Yeah. 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 I saw, I saw that too. Yeah. But yeah, this is, the, I mean, the, the thing I really like about this, and it's, I mean, it's all in the review. So I'm going to be basically repeating myself. One of my, my favorite parts is the way that it starts. And then in the middle. I was happy with that. Yeah. And, uh, how much of, how, did you ever have to feel like you needed to rewrite some portions based on the way the art came back? Oh, oh always, always. To where somebody get, got somebody threw an idea at you and you're like, Absolutely. you know what? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That is by far my favorite part of the collaborative process. Yeah. And I always tell people, if you're a writer, embrace that. Like, don't ever be that douchebag that's like, well, my, my, we're going to do my idea. We're going to do it my way because it's my idea and because it's better. Right. Because it's my idea. Right. And For sure. And my favorite part is when I get the is when I get the pencils in and I start uh, doing what I call ghetto lettering and GIMP. Right. I yeah. Make word balloons because I also want to just test it out and make sure that that artwork, that beautiful artwork isn't being crowded. Do you have enough space? Yeah, but I have sure. enough space, right? So there's always some editing involved there. But then the artist, and this was the case with uh, with Adrian, and it's the case with Preston also, they'll do something on the page that then makes me rewrite the dialogue. Because okay. I'm inspired. I see it kind of like as as like uh improvisational jazz right where there's like one guy on the drums will do something and then the guy on the saxophone will do his thing riffing off of that and it becomes like this ball that you bounce back and forward and you know each time sure. you get it you do your own thing and then you bounce it back to the other guy yeah 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 i absolutely love that i've absolutely. said that to um to to julius uh right. freeman doing he's hel he's helping me right he's i mean he's doing he's doing most of it um, and when I say most of like the heavy lifting, I mean, he has to deal with me mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and go back and forth. And I've said that to him, you know, sometimes you're the ball, sometimes you're the wall, but you got to bounce something off of something. Absolutely. <clears throat> and, Absolutely. uh, it's really turned into quite a, quite a fun. In fact, there were a couple of moments there was like, I like the writing part better than the art part. Um, but in either case, it's always going to be like when it's when it's really flowing. Yes, that's where you, you know? want to get. That's where you want to get. That's <clears throat> it, it's that sweet spot. I want to yeah, where you've knocked off the rust and um, because I know that what happens is the more time that you spend 
Like for instance, if I don't pick up the airbrush for a while or a pencil or whatever, pick your tool. Um, and, and you're not constantly using it. You're spending too much brain power on the using the tool part where you or like freestyle bike. Uh, you, you, you haven't been on the bike in a while. You got to spend too much brain power learning how to keep the bike up when you should be using that brain power to figure out the next cool trick. Right. Uh, because you already know what's going to happen. It's already an, an extension of your body. It's already smooth. It's doing what it's supposed to. Right. And then you have room to get more creative, you right. know, instead of, you know, you're, you're worried about your keyboarding or whatever. I don't know exactly. what it would be for a writer, but, uh, well, for um, some people, it's format they get hung up on, mm -hmm. and uh, which I always tell people, don't pay attention to that stuff. Because, you know, when you're writing a comic book script, you're basically writing a blueprint, mm -hmm. and there's going to be like two other people that are going to read it. And that's your artist and your letterer. And that's right. it. Right? Now, that doesn't mean that when I sit down to write a script, I don't intend to make it entertaining. Right? Sure. For that one person, for those two people that are, that are going to be reading it, I still try to make it a page turner. It's also cool because I can actually address them directly, especially and by name if I know who's who the uh, who the artist is, right? Like right. you know, Preston, this like th this panel right here. It's like I was thinking of doing it this way, but you know, you could also maybe do it that way, or just like maybe you have an idea that's better than mine. That sort of a thing. And, yeah, and you have to have room for that. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. What I, I found is um, where uh, Julius isn't just writing or helping me flesh things out, but um, editing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on the fly, kind of. Um, you know, where I have, lay well, I have layouts. I, I've sent them to him, and he's saying, like, you know, this panel should really start the next page here, and you're fine if you just stretch this out more, give yourself more room here to draw. Um, the best... The, the best reason being um, because we are our own echo chamber. And if you, you want somebody else to be able to look at it from a third party and family member, okay, but probably even outside of that, you know? Right. Because you don't want your, like your mom, it's not going to be no. like, have you ever seen, have you ever seen um, cooties? Cooties. No. Cooties. Oh no. man, it is a great twist on the zombie sub, sub. Say it, Dave. Yeah. Zombie subgenre. Right. Um, and it all happens, I believe, in a summer school class. And it all happens, and it starts with which, by the way, is the opening credits to the movie. Mm. How a chicken nugget is made. Oh, gnarly. And it's just a bad chicken nugget. Yeah. And um, what is up, Latin A? <laughs> Man, that's a, that's a good name right there. One A. Yeah. Shout it, shout it loud, shout it proud. Seriously, <laughs> my knee hit the desk. But um, the the whole point of the um, my my point is that there's a scene where Elijah Wood is the the main character. He's writing a book, and he gives the manuscript to his mom. He's living at home. Okay. And he's doing a, um, what do you call it? Um, he wants a critique. Oh. And she goes, oh, I, like, I really liked it. And he's like, don't hold back. <laughs> yeah, I, I, need, I need that. I need you to be honest. And then she just goes down this whole list of shit that's totally wrong with it. And it's his mom. You know, but she but she just goes bang, bang. This was bad. That was wrong. And he's like, oh, yeah, really? Okay, that's, that's, that's good to know. In other words, the whole thing is crap. Start over, right? Yeah, <clears throat> right. But, um, yeah. So, yeah, family members don't generally do that. You no, know, it's more like no, you get that pat on the head. Oh no, it's really good. I really like it, honey. Well, yeah, yeah or they could be like really negative. Uh, my brother called Six Gun Gorilla a uh, vanity project. Really? And, yeah. And Stop insert. Yes, Who's I guess. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I know, like, right? do you even know what a vanity <laughs> project is? Right. Right? Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and uh, my father said it would never inspire anybody. <laughs> That's a it, inspired Boom, it, it inspired Boom Studios to create a book within one whole week. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, there was Octopus Cowboy, which was actually very good. 
No, this is this, but I, I mean, this is it reads like a it reads like a western, and it, that's of what course, it, how I mean, I wrote it's, it. it's supposed to, but yeah, the um, um, when when he gets into the tavern, the saloon, rather, yeah. I mean, let's call it, yeah, let's yeah, call yeah. it spade a spade, yeah, and and just uh, totally kicks ass. It's like that, um, what would you call it? It reminded me of a if if the scene where Mongo in Blazing Saddles goes into yeah. the bar and it wasn't supposed to be funny. Right. That's right. what it would be like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it is meant to be fun. And that's that's the thing is uh, it was a balancing act for me because I had the story that I wanted to tell that was kind of heavy, right? Mm -hmm. And I told myself right from the bat, like, I have to play this straight because it's going to be more fun if I play it straight and everything's right. always reaching at you these days. It's like, I want this to be sincere. Right. And, and so, you know, I mean, ultimately, well, and that's about, why when, when, cause in the other, in the other one, the boom studios, when the grill is talking, and I'm like, ah, don't do that. Right. Well, it turns um, out that he's not even real that he's like some kind of like a hologram or something like that. Yeah. It's like a mental construct or something like that. But, something, but, your, something your brain would create in a dream. Exactly. But, yeah. But here's here's an here's an interesting point. When I showed the script for the first issue to a friend of mine who uh, is a, uh, a a Hollywood screenwriter, he's worked with George Romero and people like that, oh, right? Wow. And um, he did the um, Thirteen Ghosts. Uh, oh, he wrote it, that. Which was actually, okay, <clears throat> yeah. Neil Marshall is his name, right? I remember not hating that. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. My yeah, that, which was my impression too. Uh, he told me that you know, if I'm buying a comic that's called Six Gun Gorilla, mm -hmm. there better be a Six Gun Gorilla in the first five pages, right? And so, I was originally going to open it in the jungle in the Congo and you know, and start it out David Copperfield mm -hmm. style, right. right? I was yeah. born, right? And he mentioned that and I was like, damn, he's right. So let me do a little flash forward yeah. where uh, uh, it's basically acting kind of as a teaser where we're seeing a, um, an old West showdown, except one of the parties is a gorilla. Yeah, and no, I, exactly. I mean, well, I went through the same, I went through the same thing, only it was me remembering somebody talking about a book. This is like from way years ago. And I don't even, I, there's no reason why this should have gotten stuck in my head. But this, this woman's editor friend or whatever had said um, that if you're going to, you know, write a book about whatever it is, fill in the blank, your first chapter needs to open with a, it's got to have a hook. Yes. You know, and it's, and so she's reading the first paragraph of the first chapter and it's just, this bloody whatever thing about a witch and stuff. And it was just, it was like the, 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 the opening scene to narc. If you've ever seen that, it's just this giant chase through this guy's going after a, uh, one cops chasing after a guy with uh, he's, he's got syringes on him, hot syringes that he's trying to get away from the cop. And it is a, super intense opening scene. And by the time you're done with it, you're like, okay, now they got me. Right. Exactly. Right. And I was going through the same thing as like, this book is a slow build up to what's supposed to be happening. And nobody's seeing my character for God, how many pages it's all this, you know, how we got here. I mean, it's all this, we're going to get there. I needed to do what you did, which is how we got here. Yeah, and, and there's uh, there's another movie that does that too really well, and I can't think of uh, I can't think of it. I think I know a lot of movies do they. It's like a. I don't want to say it's not a Tarantino thing. It's just there's got to be a name for it though, right? Where you start in the middle and then. I don't know that there is. I don't know that that there is. There must be though. But I've read a, a ton of books about writing, and here's the thing about books about writing, uh, they're mostly useless. Uh, I read them for fun, <laughs> right? And uh, I have them. I have them as good luck charms. Yeah, there you go. Not about like books about writing, but like this one here. I've got like framed ink. There's a uh, god. There's got to be at least three or four other books up there about how to draw a comic book. 
thinking that in in one of these is going to be that that magic nugget that's just yes. going to open it up for me. Yeah, it don't work that way. Yeah, I know exactly. It don't work, it, it, it don't work that way. But I yeah. should mention. I should mention. Uh, I think the main reason why the Boom Studios uh, Six Gun Gorilla ended up in the in the fifty cent bin, why their sales started out big and then dipped precipitously. People yeah. bought that first issue because it said Six Gun Gorilla and it has like a no gorilla, gorilla with six guns on the cover, and they were right. like, "Well, what the hell is this?" Right? So they bought that, and then the gorilla shows up at in the very last page. Right. Right. Exactly. Bait and switch. Mm -hmm. Right. Because when mm -hmm. you're calling your book Six Gun Gorilla, you're making a contract with the reader to give yeah. them what they bought, what they right. thought they bought. And or, or what is it? Six foot cricket. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, that was know, the other thing about that book that kind of like bothered me like that, that, that he's a gorilla, a shooting gorilla with with guns is. It's a, it's a plate. It could be anything. Yes. You know, what, what was it? Um, I remember Kevin Smith doing a talk about the Superman movie that was supposed to be done with Nicolas Cage. Yeah. Superman lives. Yeah. Yeah. Superman lives. And at the end of that script or at the end of that story with this, he was supposed to be fighting this giant mechanical spider. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, and then later on, the where we do see a giant mechanical spider in a movie that totally tanked was Wild Wild West, which yes. I believe was written by the same guy. It wasn't written by the same guy. It was produced by the same guy. That's it. Right. John Peters or Peter Goobers, one of those fucking yeah. dudes, right? right? That's like evidently an idiot. And, uh, you know, he kept telling Kevin Smith, like, you know, you need to have like uh, a polar bear fight. We need to have Superman fighting a polar bear. And then he has to fight a giant spider, right? Yeah, right. And so he shooed. I remember reading the script ages ago, and you could tell he very crudely kind of shoehorned those bits in. Exactly. You know, maybe that those would get cut out later. And um, he talked to somebody else that worked for the same guy, and he was like, "Man, the guy really likes polar bears, doesn't he?" Mm -hmm. And like giant mechanical spiders. Right, but but the point being is, it it wasn't about the Wild West. No. It wasn't about Superman. It was no. about that giant mechanical spider. Yeah, and because that's what that six gun gorilla is. It's not about the six gun gorilla. Mm -hmm. It's about some other guy and his romance in this other world or or, or whatever. So instead of instead of writing something compelling about those things, you just sort of haphazardly attach them to the hull of this ship to make it look like something else. Yes, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, and and um, that's. But and I'm no critic. <laughs> well, look, dude. I, no, I, you know, I'm not saying everybody's a critic. It's true. <laughs> well, and somebody should have been their own worst critic in that case. Well, is yeah. That <laughs> but some people are very lack self awareness. Which is why I, the editor is uh, is is important. You know. Oh, well, and I don't know how. I don't. I mean, you didn't have one here. I mean, well, you showed it to other people. You don't have one. You don't have one credited. No, there is no editor on the editor on this right and um that's not to say that like i think getting an editor is a bad idea i think a good editor is worth their weight in gold yeah but i just knew what i wanted this to be very very clearly and yeah. i've been doing this long enough where i felt like i could trust my instincts and when i showed the first issue to somebody that i trusted to be raw with me i remember he read it and he, uh, I was. He gave me one word. He's. I was like, "How was it?" He said, "Confident." Yes. Yeah. Because it's um, <sighs> it's very solid. Uh, yeah. I was. You know, it, it doesn't stray yeah. from. It doesn't stray from anything. Especially like I love the um the uh, that. I think this is my favorite part of the whole thing. This this issue. Yeah, well, that's when you finally get like a big payoff. That's called oh, the big. Yeah. It's called the, the big, big gun, gun down, down for a reason. reason. Yeah, <laughs> right. No, that is, that's 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 really good. Um, but yeah, had the, the the gorilla not talking, except that you have like in one panel where his fingers and hands are doing like a sign language thing. Yeah, and then right from there, you know that, you know, he's Coco or Amy. Yes, or whatever. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he and can talk and. 
Right. And in that issue, I also get inside his head for the first time. Yeah, I like the way you did those narration boxes where you can you're you're describing what he's thinking, feeling. Like as as a gorilla. And oddly enough, and and in the, maybe it's a um a dances with wolves type thing where the biggest animal in the whole cast is the one with the most straight moral compass. Yeah. So it is like that Meridian thing um, or Midian, whatever it is, who are the real monsters. Right. Yeah. 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 Clive Barker's Nightbreed. Yeah. Right. And, and, um, uh, but, but that's the thing. I'm like, you know, when I'm reading this and I'm like, man, I'm picking up on all these different themes and, and 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 I'm do like doing my own callbacks and thinking. Well, I wonder if he was inspired by this, this, or this, or if these are all common tropes. And I'm just a neophyte reading a comic book, discovering all of this stuff for the first time. Meanwhile, how this book is put together is is it is it old hat and just genius to me, or is it just really genius? I'd like to think that it's the latter, because I always give myself a little bit of room. Whereas. I, I only got back into comic books like a couple of years ago. So I don't wouldn't consider myself to be like a seasoned reader, but I want to I'd like to think that it's is it, it is it is good and it is well written or am I don't want to think that I'm just easily impressed, which that couldn't be the case because that other thing was a piece of shit. Well, also well here's the thing. The reaction to this book has been astounding it's more than i ever expected yeah because i figured yeah. this is like some people are really gonna like this like some, some people are gonna really like this and, well, and here's the thing like, it, yeah, somebody, right. and some people are gonna hate it but everybody's somebody's gonna, gonna, gonna look it. at this and think or watch this uh live stream if they are watching this live stream and think i'm not into westerns right that's doesn't have anything to do with with this it just right. happens to, it just happens to be one Yes, and, yeah. and 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 here's the thing. I've had people actually contact me privately and say, "Yo, like you know, I was watching this live stream. Live stream. People were talking about like what a great writer you are. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have anything that's not a western?" And I was like, "Well, like yeah, Six Gun Gorilla is a western, but but it's a western really. with a freaking gorilla. Yeah, that completely puts it into the into another genre, sure. right?" Uh, which is which would be to say uh, like uh, fantasy adventure, weird yeah. west, that kind of a thing. Or uh, like a like I I think I'd mentioned it in the review of Firefly, a sci-fi western. Right. Well, but I well I mentioned it in the way that I, I like the way that you did your dialogue, like in those little one-liners that when like when you hear uh, Mal say uh, you know was it my <laughs> my patience with you is drawing to a middle. <laughs> Or Correct. something like that. But my first, I, I, I actually, I cut this part out of the review because I felt like I was being too wordy. But my first experience with anything that Joss Whedon did yeah. was Firefly. And yeah. that was like a really personal project to him. And it was one of those things that was just perfect from beginning to end. And it wasn't until after I had experienced more of his stuff and started listening to, you know, people use the term Whedonism. Oh God, yeah. That I knew what that you know. What I know. was read. I was watching something for the like for the first time and going. I really love this. Only to realize later on that having the Avengers sitting in a restaurant at the end of the movie eating shawarma is a shawarma. Whedonism. Shawarma, whatever it's called, yeah, is a is is a Whedonism, and that um, you know, unlike Steven Spielberg he hasn't found a way out of his safe space. No, and he also doesn't respect the intelligence of his audience. He feels that they're not smart enough to get what he's trying to say, so he comes out and says it very literally. Mm -hmm. His endings in particular are ham-fisted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In, in the extreme. Not like right. a Christopher Nolan where you're like, man, I feel like I need a degree after I got finished watching that movie. Right, right, right. Respect the intelligence of your audience. Always mm -hmm. assume that your audience is at least as smart as you, maybe even smarter. Right. Uh, yeah, I'd like I'd like to think that too. Um, hopefully I, I can do that. This is all like it's it's all it's all very new, but like and and every one of these things that I read, i I'm 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 not just reading it. Um, and, and I wouldn't say like deconstructing it. I'm trying to figure out 
um, how to better do my thing, like for the first time. While at the same time, oh, yeah, yeah, not yeah. Uh, n- not moving forward. Right. You know what I mean? Like you, right. you have to at least take those plotting steps in the right direction. Uh, I'm a big fan of structure and story structure. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I understand that there are people, they want to uh, reinvent the wheel. They want to do something that's incredibly original right out, out of the gate. And I always feel that you need to learn the rules before you break the rules. Uh, somebody like Picasso. Oh, sure, exactly. Right? Was a proper artist before he became Pablo Picasso. Right. And if you look at his early paintings, you know, the guy learned how to paint. And, you know, so he learned the rule, the rules, he mastered the rules, and then he broke them. Uh, otherwise, you're just, you know, uh, flailing around, just throwing ideas. Throwing paint. Yeah. yeah otherwise, it's- you're Jackson Pollock. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, this is also why uh, when it comes to books on writing, uh, the ones I always recommend are uh, Hero of a Thousand Faces by Joseph Campbell. Uh, I always re- recommend that people read Carl Jung. Uh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm very much a Jungian, and I very much write from a Jungian uh, headspace. You know, Jung was the guy who um, believed in the collective unconscious and uh, archetypes. Okay. Right? And uh, also uh, poetics by Aristotle, right? So none of these yeah. things teach, teach <laughs> none of these things. Which is it's just fifty pages, you know. People are like, "Oh, Aristotle, man, do I have to read that?" It's fifty I'll pages. I an, promise you, I'll still do it as an audiobook. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, but I promise you, you're going to get more out of that, out of Aristotle's poetics, than you are like any number of books on writing. Right. Right. I mean, you know, nuts and bolts stuff is important. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, well, this moved pretty quick too. I I tried to keep it. I, well, that's the thing when you're working with an outrageous premise like this, you got to keep it moving, right? Yeah, you can't give to people enough time to think. Nah, exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly. Okay. And you know, I was gonna like slow burn it for like another issue, but then one of my readers was like, "Man, I loved issue two, but we better start getting to some vengeance." And I was like, you know what? He's right. And so I did a lot of condensing. And, uh, you know, you want to basically eject every scene that doesn't move the story forward. That's not to say that you can't have character scenes, but then the character scene should maybe be um, developing the theme of uh, of your story, right? Which is what you mean, like simultaneously? Yes. Right, so that it complements the story, and uh, maybe gives it another uh, dimension. You know, you don't want you know, you know. Speaking of uh, uh, Whedonisms, you know, or I use the term Whedon-y. You look at the first Avengers movie, and you could tell that he toned down the Whedoniness significantly. In which one? At the Avengers, the first Avengers. Yeah. Movie, right. Yeah. He, yes. he, he and I think that it's it's a lot. It, the movie's a lot better for that. Oh. You don't want you don't want to watch something that reminds you of, uh, you know, Buffy, Buffy the Vampire, Vampire Slayer. Slayer. Gonna... Right, and then you see uh, uh, Avengers: Age of Ultron, the second one, and it's just Whedon-y as fuck. Mm-hmm. And which is well, one of the reasons that's such a terrible movie. You know, it's too bad too because um, I was really looking forward to the James Spader. You know. Yeah, as a, as a Zoltron. There's, I've been a big fan of his ever since Sex Lies and Videotape. Of course. Oh yeah, no, no. He's you know, he's especially great in Wolf. He's especially especially James oh, yeah. Spadery. Yes. Yeah. The- well, uh, yeah. And then now that he's older and did like Blacklist and stuff, and and right. even in even in Lincoln, <laughs> it's like you know, just go ahead. I like I had like tweeted that once out a long time ago. Like you need to change the name of the Oscars to the Spaders. Right, because right. it just it he's he is he's he's really good. He's got to that point to where he can just what was it? I think Don Rickles had said something about that. He goes, yeah, back in the day, uh, you didn't really have actors. You had Clark Gable, and all Clark Gable was was Clark Gable with the camera turned on him. 
Right. You know, they'd be like, uh, you know, frankly, my dear Scarlet, I don't give a damn. All right, cut. All right, let's go. Get a steak, you know. Yeah, yeah. He was absolutely. just that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, John Wayne was like that, too. These were people that weren't artists in an artistic sense or weren't actors in an artistic sense. They uh, they brought presence. Yes. Yeah, that was basically, yeah, that was it. Right. And so the they're part. great at playing that one character yeah they didn't one. need to be someone right. else right well yeah and, and i think that that's that's totally uh that's totally fine yeah for the time who's yes. who's who's paying you to pretend to be somebody else when they showed up to see you exactly yeah. exactly yeah i mean you know you this is why you know uh you don't want to cast john wayne as genji's Khan, which which actually happens I know. I remember right? every time I see that, I'm like, yeah, I can't like, like, what were they thinking? I don't know. Right? I don't know. I yeah, don't know. So, <laughs> so when people like this on, on, on actors like that, I'm like, no, they're great in that one part. Yeah. You know, as long as they're playing that character, yeah. then you're going. Can you imagine that was at like John Wayne was talking to the studio, being like, I'm being typecast. Yeah, yeah, we know. Exactly, that's what puts the asses in the seats. Exactly, right. And if somebody wants to fucking branch out, that's cool, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. If they fall flat on their face, well, okay, they tried. They tried some, some something different. At least they can always go back to being what they were before. Um, you know, it's like, or you look at somebody like Will Smith, for instance, right? Uh, who when I heard he was cast in I Am Legend, I was just like, oh, no, right? Because which which Will Smith are we getting? Are we getting Will Smith, right? Being Will Smith, or, or mm -hmm. are we getting the proper actor? Yeah. And what we got was the proper actor. I have a lot of problems with that damn movie, but he's not one of them. Right, right. Right? Now, of course, you know, bringing up his name, I mean, he's he's so over. It's it's. Yeah, it's that was, um, boy, talk about your cries for help. Yeah, seriously, dude. <sighs> seriously. <laughs> but at the same time, I was like, yeah, no one's going to be talking about this in a week. Yep. Something <laughs> else outrageous will happen that will catch everybody's attention. Yeah. Metal nope. Movies and Brewski says Wolf is his uh, Wolf is uh, Spader's best. Now, I wasn't necessarily I down with the slow-mo with the slow -mo fight scene at the end. Um, but I don't know what else you were going to do in 1993. Yeah, and the fact that there was a monster rumble at the end of that movie mm -hmm. made me very happy because as much as I enjoyed that film and thought it was very well made, uh, it felt like it was maybe a little embarrassed or kind of intentionally avoiding the horror movie label, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. like, well, this is no, no, this is this is this isn't horror. This is more elevated than that. Now, of course, you have that stupid term, elevated horror, right? And Instead, we got a. What monster. do you mean, like, like, uh, what do you consider to be elevated horror? Well, oh God, like um, the witch. Because I think it's a bullshit. I think it's a bullshit term. When I hear it, I think woke horror. Oh, 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 oh. I think I think of uh, Get Out. I think of. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought you were talking about like, like movies, horror movies that he inspired. Uh, what? Um. I thought you meant something like a horror movie that had a, uh, a more of like a, a more of an intelligent, like it's not a slasher movie. You actually need to use your brain to get from one end to the other. Yeah, but that's, you know, those are like giallos, you know, like the Italian slasher movies that came out before, you know, the slasher genre was a thing. Yeah. Uh, High class horror. When you said elevated, that's kind of what I, I thought you meant. More well, I mean, it's a bullshit. It's a bull. It's a bullshit term. You know, yeah. And at the moment I heard, it, I was like, "That's a bullshit term, right there." Mm -hmm. What do you? What the hell does that even mean? At first, I took it to mean woke horror, like uh, woke Black Christmas. Have you seen woke Black Christmas yet? I've seen. Is it called that, or no. is it just a new? Is it just a remake? It's the second remake of Bob Clark's original Black hmm. Christmas. It's a no, but now I can't wait. Oh, dude, I gotta dude. Hate watch it. Oh my God! Oh, is it, more, is it a good hate watch? <laughs> your face is doing things that I haven't seen your face do before. How odd! It's <clears throat> artsy can't... fartsy horror. Yeah, it's it's not even artsy fartsy because there is art house horror, 
that I love to pieces. Mm -hmm. In fact, that might be my favorite genre. It's one of them for sure, right? Yeah. Because it's operating in a sphere where the audience is about that big. Because it's too arty for the horror audience. And even though you can get horror fans to watch art film art yeah. films, you can't get the art film, the art house audience to watch a horror film. Yeah, it's kind of just a one way one way yeah. thing. Yeah. But Would you I consider mean, like an art house horror, would that be like um um Company of Wolves? Uh, I'm gonna uh, have to watch. I'm gonna have to watch that one again. I re I remember being Dracula? really impressed with the. No, I was thinking of um. She's that artist who's from here, the famous one. Um, Andy. Why can't I think of his last name? You know, because, Elvis eleven times. Remember, you'll remember it 15 minutes from now. The Campbell Soup Can guy. Candles. Oh, uh, Andy Warhol. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, a yeah. Warhol. Jeez, why couldn't I? Come up with that, whatever. I don't know. I'm well, I mean, out. like, blood I'm for aging out. Andy Warhol did Frankenstein or something like that, didn't well, he? Well, no. What happened was, uh, and and it's uh, you know, you're you're not wrong to think that because Blood for Dracula was released here in the states as Andy Warhol's Dracula, and then uh, Andy Warhol's Frankenstein, which was shot the same year, was released as Andy Warhol's Frankenstein uh, okay. because the. Uh, director Paul Morrissey was affiliated with um, with uh, Andy Warhol, like he was part of like the factory or uh, okay of his. So that's not considered art, art house. Picture. That's not considered art house horror because it was a legitimate art artist doing it. No, I mean, I mean, I consider it. Well, once again, it's a subjective thing. I consider uh, 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 Blood for Frankenstein to be a great art house uh, horror. Okay. Um. Jeez, uh, some other ones. The, the, there's uh, oh, um, uh, Doctor Jekyll and His Women. That's incredible. That's very much an out, out uh, art house. Almost an outhouse. That's very yeah, much an art some house. of them are that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's <laughs> it, it's it's a very oh, um, Cemetery Man, aka Delamore, Delamorte. Yeah, we, uh, you guys were talking about that before. That one came up when you were like trying to figure out the next one that you're going to watch. Incidentally, yeah. that reminds me. Have you ever considered? If there is one out there, and who could tell? Um, yeah. You seem to like a lot of horror. Is there a horror movie that you really can't stand? Oh, there's plenty of them. Good. Maybe one of those. Lake, Lake Placid? Lake Flaccid, as I like to call it? That's one with Betty White, right? I think so. Had an alligator or something? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's, I mean, my God, I mean, there's no shortage of shitty horror films. Right. Uh, one of, you know, one of the essential components of being a horror fan, at least back in the Dizzy, uh, before you had the internet and that sort of a thing, and you had access to just about everything, was that you had to sift through a lot of crap. You have to sift to sift through a lot of crap to find that occasional gold nugget or the occasional uh, diamond in the rough. Right. That was it was part of the process. You had to pay your dues that way. Right. Right. Of course, How now we on this? <laughs> we're talking about right, horror right? music. It's like it's such a it's such a familiar off ramp with you, Brian. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's you I'm, know, I take I, full responsibility. I, I'm a monster kid to the core. Yeah, I will always be that little boy that was like sitting reading his uh, famous monsters magazine and making the uh, Aurora monster model kits, and you know he's yeah. very much uh, uh, at at the at the controls. Somebody was, um, oh man, I thought maybe it was Patrick Parnell, but that had occurred to me, like in some of these. Um, uh, uh, parks and stuff that you can get and uh, that that get added on and you know patrick's always doing toys um i don't know what you're familiar doing stuff with if you like throw in cards or bookmarks or like um matt put in the that really nice bottle opener yeah man all the I different love that stuff thing. yeah 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 um that i'm not seeing the tchotchkes personally but i like it when i get them well imagine this though okay those Aurora monster models having a six gun gorilla oh, model that goes with the book. That well, would have been really cool. Well, I, I did have a miniature that I was selling on the previous campaign. Yeah. That's still not ready. That's okay. still not in the hands of the backers, which kills me. But 
I'm gonna hook them up right naturally. Yeah, uh, no, yeah, you, you treated me pretty good too. I think there was something about this particular tier when it was on Indiegogo, where um, I somehow somehow there wasn't an eight or a seven and eight in there with it. I was like, well, I I want to get all of it. But I'm glad I'm glad he didn't tell me that you're going to do a ten issue omnibus because then I wouldn't have ended up with this stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, because I thought that was like kind of like funny, like like you know, two weeks later, the whole thing with the ten issues comes out, and I'm I was like kind of dealing with that here at the house because I have to put it like a huge, I have to make a huge uh, improvement to the plumbing, um, and without getting too gross. Um, we're not in, we don't have public sewage here in this little neighborhood, right? Where we're surrounded, where there is a municipal sewage here, there's municipal sewage here, but in this little coal patch, because that's what it is, the whole thing's built on top of a mine. Ah, there, there isn't. So, um, I need to replace my tank, right? And it's expensive. But the way that the plumbing is here, I probably shouldn't even be talking about it. the way that the plumbing is here. If there there might be a um, a come on, oh, a you got a buddy, you got a, a buddy, a, yeah, a septic enforcement officer that tells me <laughs> I have to change all the plumbing in my house because of the way it used to work versus the way it's supposed to work now. All right, come on up, yay! All right. Yeah, I mean, like I don't know if you know this about me, but I see somebody do, yeah. right around the stream. I will stop. Things Stop everything. Dead. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, how do I do this? You go show us your buddy. Yeah. Show us your buddy. There you oh what a pretty pooch. Wait, how do I do this? Oh this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well now he's not on camera. Look at the camera. Oh here. Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> Easy does it. So <laughs> that's a big lap dog you got there. Yeah, yeah, man. Aww. And our That's next, thing, our next yeah. door neighbor has. Yeah, he's he's too big. He can't fit. Aww. He's <clears throat> our next door neighbor is uh, fostering a dog that's not unlike the one that he replaced. Mm -hmm. And boy, you want to see his hair go straight up? Oh, oh wow, it's bad. Aww. Now the dog that they actually have, he gets along with. They run around and and whatever, but. Yeah, man, that is one finicky dog. He knows who he likes. He knows who he doesn't. Yeah. So yeah. Well, um, I mean, you know, I uh, I always felt that animals are better judges of character than people usually are. Yeah. Um, but uh, just getting back to the uh, campaign, you've got you've got five days left. I would really yeah. like to know what your prediction is. I don't know. I don't know. Um. Part of me thinks that I'm getting a message that people don't about because I know some people were mad at me for using Zoop. And I don't get that. I don't. And I understand that then there are people that are that there maybe aren't backing it because they're like, well, I prefer the uh, convenience of Indiegogo because I already have an account there. It's very easy to create an account at Zoop. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the same experience that you always have because I'm responsible for, for fulfillment. They're not. Right. Right. Yeah, I'm already signed up. Thanks, buddy. I mean, I, I have like I have a Zoop account. Right. Um, well, a lot of people already have them because they backed Axe Wielder John. Which one is that? Oh, that looks dope as f, dude. You gotta check that out. That's amazing. That's amazing looking. <laughs> okay. Yeah, a lot of people <clears throat> uh, already have Zoop accounts because of that. But um, then there were like people that were mad at me because. Uh, there's a woman that works there that's like a social justice warrior that used to work for Kickstarter. Uh, Camilla Zong, I think her name I is. I heard that name. She's where? She's at. They. She works at Soup. Now, mind you, if you she go. Does. Yeah, but if you go Why and. You here? <laughs> right? That might have something to do with it. Now, I remember again, there's that word again, drama. I remember that drama. Yes. yes. She was gatekeeping over it. She was, she was gatekeeping um, at Kickstarter. Yeah. And so they hired her. So they were thinking like, oh, shit, like they're going to be gatekeeping over there. But here's the newsflash. They know who I am. Do you know what I'm saying? 
Good. There's no way that they would work with me without sticking a microscope up my ass and checking out my Twitter profile, my Facebook, all of my uh, social media. Do you really I, think they get into it that that much? I think everybody gets into it that much. Yeah, without a doubt. They without don't just doubt. want the money? Well, Because mm, yeah. isn't that the point? I would think that that would be the point, right? Yeah. But then there's like people that are mad because it's just like, because that bitch works there. And I'm just like, look... If you look at like the uh, maybe it's in the facts or something like that, where you get the background, like what Zoop is, what we stand for, what we believe in, and then you mm -hmm. see the names of the founders, her name is not on there. As a, so yeah. she works there, she works there. Now, I'm sure there's somebody horrible that works at Indiegogo that's that's responsible for shadow banning our campaigns, right? Yes. But they don't seem to have a problem with that, but they have a problem with me using Zoop because that bitch works there. It's like, if you're not going to back my book, okay, but don't not back it because of that bitch. Yeah. I just, no, I, I, I get I, that. I, yeah. I, I, because, I'm yeah, babbling. because it's, 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 it's a real, it's a guilt by association, but it's not even that it's, it's not even it, that. Yeah. Right. Well, like, like, um, and here's the other thing we yeah. need alternate platforms, right? That's why yes. I did this campaign in the first place was because a bunch of us were looking at Zoop from the outside and we're like, hmm, right? Because Kickstarter and Indiegogo, YouTube, Twitter, all these places, all these platforms that we use to build mm -hmm. our brands, yes. they could disappear in a heartbeat, right? Or they could disappear us, I should say, in a yeah. heartbeat, right? Like I said, the yeah, and I think that's, that's, that's why Eric July has got his thing on his own site. And I mean, I would do the same thing. I have a website that I I pay for, and by the way, a, a Skystra Cloud is who hosts my stuff. Um, anybody who's having issues with their um, uh, with their hosting company, I found this out while um, HostGator was putting a bunch of servers in there, like trying to upgrade their technology and stuff. That like HostGator, Register, a lot of those hosting companies are just separate it's like um i don't want to call it like fake competition but they are all under the cloud of one giant hosting company right uh conglomerate yep and that um skies for cloud they they found me on twitter they were watching me ask uh host gator why i couldn't get anybody to my emails weren't going out they weren't coming back to me for like, they weren't coming back to me. They just weren't going out. Nobody was getting anything. And then it was a thing where uh, three days later, I would get stuff coming back. And I'm like, I can't do this. You know, like my email's not doing what it's supposed to do. And anyways, Skyster Cloud saw me on Twitter doing that. And they're like, you really should check this out here. And by the way, and I started looking through their... I started looking through the responses and stuff, and that's when I learned about this whole, like, you know, hosting conglomerate thing. Mm -hmm. But I honestly, like, my when you go to my website now, it is, it screams. And, like, it's it's fast. And I, and I, I totally dig that. That's awesome. But, um, so I just picked up issues 9 and 10. Thanks, brother. Yeah, I mean, I, I really, I really want to see this do good. Um, I do too. I do too. Because it's such a good book, and th like I said, I, I don't know if <laughs> this is what happens whenever I try to do those reviews. Um, the dog will start barking. Somebody might call me, whatever, and that totally throws me off of my like. It takes a while to get back into that groove where I can like concentrate and stuff. Yeah. So <clears throat> I can't remember the thing that I said on takes one, two, and three, and if it actually made it into take four. <laughs> right, right. But I do remember thinking to myself that I have not had as much fun with one of these books since Monster MD. Oh, wow. Thank you. Monster, yeah, because Monster MD, it had that, it had the same kind of, uh, it's, it's say, it, it was the same kind of flow, the same kind of energy going through, not the, obviously, the ones of Western, ones the other, but the, the way that stuff was trickled out through there and it was just very effectively, very effectively written. And it turns out the guy that was doing his artwork was doing something for a company called, oh man, it's escaping me now, but they're like, I could point to where this place is from my job. Okay. It's like this little comic book publishing company being out of somebody's house or whatever. 
Okay. And uh, I was like, one of these days, I got to just like knock on the door and be like, teach me everything. <laughs> well, you know, um, you'd be surprised sometimes at how uh, generous people can be. Yeah. 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 I, I'll have to go through that. Um, Cause I found it through sometimes I'll take a, a, a talent or a creator and I'll try to find out more about them on the comic comicbooks.org or comics.org, the comic book data, the grand comic book database. Yeah. And that's where I figured, Oh, this guy's from uh, Italy and he's been doing work with this publishing company. I'm like, where are they from? I'm like, that's right down the street from my work. That's you know, nice. it was, yeah, it was weird. Um, but are you um, going to get rid of that um, oversized humble bone in your body and go on other streams? And if, if, if they'll have me, it's been difficult. It's been, it's been very difficult. There aren't as many streams as there used to be. And really? uh, a lot of the ones that uh, a, lot, a lot of the regulars, the heavy hitters, uh, they're either busy or they haven't gotten back to me. Or I saw, I mean, when I saw you on, I saw you on Ethan's channel the other night and I was like, man, that's awesome. Cause you know, the other stuff yeah, that we but, were talking about, I was like, really glad to see you there. How much of this is due to that appearance? Zero. Is that right? Yes. I mean, cause I'm well, sure you guys talked about it. No, no, no. Uh, in fact, when you brought it up, that was the only time that, uh, the, the word that the, that the title, uh, passed, uh, Ethan's lips. Did they do others? Oh yeah. I wasn't there for the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. No, I mean it was mainly about this was about the Mark Brooks thing, actually. Okay. So it wasn't really a shill, it wasn't really a uh, a shill stream. Oh, all right. Yeah. All right. I know Ethan's a big fan, but he but he's uh never had me on to uh to uh promote it. I don't know, man. This is really this is really good. I think that I think that it's, uh, I always felt it could be uh, honestly okay. If you want, if you want me to get a little braggadocious, uh, I yeah. always, I always felt that this could be one of CG's flagship books. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I mean, I I I, I believe it. I mean that there's there's stuff about um, there's stuff about uh, graveyard shift that I like. And there's stuff about it that it's it's not it's like, like that it's hard to get through. This is what happens to me whenever I'm reading this stuff. I'm I'm trying to put myself in the head of the people that create it to help me understand the book better, and or at least to say to my own self, if there's a reason why I like it or I don't like it, it has. What is it about the person who's? Let's see if I get this right. Is it me? And just what my you know what my. Um, style is what i like don't like or is it something that the creator is or isn't doing right okay because i am not one of those big monster guys i didn't have the aurora model kit right. i've i've never i mean like the universal monster stuff is okay right and i and i and i like it okay but yeah. um i was always like i like the thing you know alien give me good special effects put right, me right, right. right in there make me believe visually that this stuff can happen and yeah and i love that stuff and, too exactly right um but your my appreciation for that is much greater than it is for the appreciation for you know like the mummy and some of these some of these movies tend to be plotting to me well yeah <clears throat> and, and, uh, and and that's okay because i'm i it's hard for me to go back in time as i would this is what they were into this is what my mindset set should be and that's why i'm watching this I'm, not, I'm, I'm watching right. the Steve McQueen blob, but it's still not going to be as good as because I was, thought Shawnee Smith was like really, really cute too. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I didn't know the Chuck Russell uh, remake of the blob is superior to the original in every way. Mm -hmm. But what you get, the reason why you would watch the original version is because there's something cozy about it. And, sure, sure. You know, same thing with the Universal uh, uh, monster movies. The same thing with the Gothic uh, Hammer horror films. Mm -hmm. They started moving into more disturbing territory, right? Towards the end, yes. Movie, a film like uh, Straight On Till Morning, I think, is magnificent and it's deeply troubling. Really, it, it, like yeah, in a very good way. Like it left me deep feeling deeply troubled, and that's not what you normally go to Hammer for. You go to Hammer for. Uh, you know, vampires with big tent peg uh, fangs and yeah. really gorgeous women with the booby dresses, right? 
and mm-hmm. you know that hammer glamour you know um that very uh sort of uh opulent look on a uh, a low budget the atmosphere yeah. all that that's stuff. one of the things I like on that last one that we watched i thought they did that really good oh boy he's kissing. That's this, a is the, this is this is a <laughs> separation anxiety. <laughs> it's all good. Oh yeah, it well sometimes. <laughs> <clears throat> so um, yeah, my point, and I did have one. Right. This is how you can tell you're having a decent, you know, conversation. It just goes everywhere. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, oh, um, I like John's twist on the Universal monsters. And I thought it was a, a really good. In fact, it was that one line that he had was in the. I think he was promoting Graveyard Shift, the second one, and that made me get on board. As he he said, Universal Monsters meets the uh, X Men, yeah. and I was like, "Wow, that's awesome! That's really cool." But I honestly like what um, I mean. Then, in, in everybody's opinion, it's going to be everybody's opinion. But what Von Von Klaus did by wrapping all of those universal monsters up in one arm yes was even cooler to genius me. ingenious yeah, it's a cool but, idea, it's a cool idea. Right. but what makes that book work as as well as it does mm-hmm. is that it has a heart and yeah it, it's very often that i look at works of art and there's usually a scene or a moment that yes. is the heart of the story right Right. Yeah. And yeah. in Monster MD, of course, it's when Heidi gets wounded and he has to operate on her, but she's invisible. Right. Right. And the whole concept of the character is hilarious because she's like, you could tell from what she's wearing, yeah. that smoking hot that she has this booming figure. Mm-hmm. Right. But she's invisible. Right. Right. And um, and so he ejects her with this uh, this compound or whatever it is to make her uh, glow. Right. So right. So that, doing, so that right. he can, yeah. So he can see what he's doing, and he looks down at her, and she's glowing. She's mm-hmm. luminescent. Right. And it's at that moment that he realizes that he's in love with her. Right. Right. It, it's that moment when you've fallen in love with somebody, and you realize that you've fallen in love with somebody, and suddenly you're looking at them, and you're looking at them with new eyes. Right. Yeah. Right. And I just thought, well, like, Brian, you're gonna make me cry. Right, he nailed it. He nailed <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, no, it was right? good. It was really good. And because otherwise, you would have a very entertaining comic book, but you wouldn't mm-hmm. have something special. Well, and I wasn't. I wasn't even like the same. Same thing with um, with Malin's book when he threw out that one line is what made me buy that one. Um, <clears throat> that invisible woman named Heidi. I was like, well, that's just. I mean, it's it's obvious, but also clever. Take yes. my money. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. Um, right. But, but then he used that to actually, you know, uh, make you really uh, love those characters. You know. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's one of the things where I'm like, uh, I just might have too much psychopath in me to be able to write a story like that. Oh, I don't think so. I think if you can appreciate something like that, you can write it too. Well, and that's well, one of the things that's one of the things that I try to put into all my work is always try to put some heart into it. Yeah. Because yeah. if I'm not feeling passionate about my story, then how am I going to get other people to feel passionate about my story? And it's well, Yeah, that's I mean and you're you know, you're probably uh you're you're probably right there. And plus, you know, Julius isn't going to let me uh Julius isn't going to let me write something bad, especially if I'm like Good. threatening to put his name on it. Yeah, no, that's good. And, uh, you know, I think that you've got something that could definitely potentially be special. And yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, looking, I'm looking forward to having it actually come to fruition. I'm like working on page five right now. Oh, yeah, brother. And and you know what? That is my favorite thing mm-hmm. about this scene. I know I go off about this like a broken record, but I love seeing people that used to just sort of be names in the chats to me. Yeah. You know, like, you know what? That dude's doing it, and he doesn't seem that bright. So <laughs> maybe I could do the same thing. Let me throw my hat in the ring. Yeah, yeah. You know who? You know who mine was? Yeah, Zach. There you go. Your boy Zach. He doesn't even like. It's like I'm like he doesn't even draw, and he's putting these things together. Yes. You yeah. know, and I'm like looking at all this. You know, I've got all this equipment around me. I've learned how to do all these other things. And the odd, nice. the odd part is, I was trying to explain it to um, 
somebody in Cool Frog stream last night. I managed to get into pinstriping and an airbrush because I saw that as as challenging as a tool to use. Right. But it is in a market that's completely different from this one. Of course. But comics is what made me start drawing in the first place. So I wanted to come back to this and it, uh, almost like it's a um, an unfulfilled promise to myself. Right. You know, to get this thing done, I have to I have to do this or I'm going to feel like I'm, uh, I'm unaccomplished. All of the other work that I put out aside, you know, whatever, uh, you know, computer graphic design stuff I've done for clients, um, custom paint jobs or anything like that. And I mean, like primer to clear and everything in between. Yeah, it's um, but th that this is the challenge. Now, this is more challenging to me than that. It's, well, it, it's weird. It's like, oh, I already know how to do all that other stuff. Well, because <laughs> it, you, it's it's storytelling, right? Yeah. Like what, like um, Preston said it best. He said that when you're making a comic book, you have two storytellers. And mm -hmm. that's very, very true. Um, and this is why also when you're working with an artist, you're not just looking at the quality of their, illust of the, of their illustrating ability. You're also looking at their storytelling. Right? Yes, because yeah, you're that's... telling a story in pictures, and you're telling a story in still pictures. And but if you're doing it right, those uh, still pictures are going to look like they're moving. Right, and that and that's one of the things that um, man. I'm so glad I'm, I'm friends with a guy who he used to do caricatures on the weekends whenever I was airbrushing at the mall, and we yeah. got to be pretty good friends. And um, uh, Fragan knows him. Oh, really? They, they, yeah, they they've worked together on some stuff. No shit. Um, but he's a very successful storyboard artist, which is damn awesome. near the same thing. Well, Mike Plug, my favorite comic book artist of all time, mm -hmm. uh, he left comics to become a storyboard artist. And yeah, probably because he's like, all the panels are the same size. <laughs> I don't have well, to think about it. It's actually kind of sad. The reason that he gave is because he didn't think he was any good. Oh. And I look at those old Werewolf by Nights. I look at those old, old Planet of the Apes magazines. I look at his work on Man Thing in particular. And it has so much heart and emotion to it. And he, you know, was working in the Marvel bullpen at, at, bullpen at that time. And he had like some of the, you know, old greats coming up to him and going, like, yeah, yeah, I read that last issue of Man Thing. Yeah, it was really good. It was really good. You're doing great. And he was like, thanks. But and he felt that they were just being nice. Ugh, right? On. And so yeah. he wanted to work Well, some I mean, we to... all have our bugaboos. Of course. Of yours course. is, yours is um, and, it, uh, and the reason I can tell you've got it is because I've got the same thing. I don't really want to climb up to the mountain and scream from this very top because mm. people are going to look at me and go, you're being an arrogant son of a bitch. Yeah, you but at I the mean? same time... But there's a certain type of humility. Uh, what's that expression? Those who uh, humble themselves are, yeah. are really trying to exalt themselves. You see that with people that. Oh, that's the yeah, the humble brag. The humble, yes, yeah. the yeah, humble yeah. brag. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I always like that. And I, I was it Oscar Wilde or somebody else has said uh, it's not bragging if you can do it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, but in this case, it's like selling something. Like, yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. I used to find that a lot when um, you you would be around a certain. <clears throat> I guess it depends. It can happen in any industry, you know. Uh, I always knew that when I was doing T-shirts and license plates and you know stuff like that in the mall, that that it was a fast food art, right? You know, and that's as far as those things take it. I mean, you could do more with other material on other things and 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 charge more money um but there would always be somebody in that group who they learn how to airbrush they're doing their t-shirts and you know they they got this much experience but that made them act like they were the greatest thing since sliced oh, bread i'm like dude you know I, yeah everyone that tells people. you that you're doing awesome work are people who don't know anything about art Right. That's one of the other reasons why I, I, I want to get into this and why I'm 
taking the time to, you know, like learn about it from you, do some reviews. And at the same time, wondering if I even know what I'm talking about is because when it comes to things like composition, color, storytelling, and things like that, that there are so many different aspects that need to be figured out and put in just the right way to make the thing work. Where yeah. when you're working on something like a not and not to diminish the skills uh, at all, but when you're working on something like a car or a motorcycle, then first of all, I want to work on something flat for once, you know. Right. Um. But they're like the those customers and the, a lot of the people that are in that that realm, they understand color and composition and paint, flake, pearl, all the different materials are all, and that's that thing. Um, yeah, and, it's and, its own and, medium. Yeah, right. It's its own. It's its own thing. But the classic um, rules to art. You know, like the way that you lay something out, you know, where you have this is your composition grid and you want to put things here, here, here or that one. Um, the, what is, what's it called? The uh, the Fibonacci sequence or the golden the golden rectangle. Yes. That yeah, those yeah. things, those things that are very classic old world um, uh, concepts don't apply when you're working on a motorcycle. No, the rule of thir the rule of threes, for instance. Yeah, exactly. Applicable to like so many different art forms. Yeah, right. yeah. If you're doing a mural on a trunk lid, maybe, but that hardly ever happens unless you're doing like in the low rider community. But I do want to take a bunch of the stuff that I've learned there, and the um, the uh, the crowds that I've been around there with like motorcycle rallies, car cruises, and things like that, and bring them in. That'd be awesome. Story. Well, dude. There's a, and that's one of the things, like whenever, when I talk to and I've been thinking about this a lot, but when I talk to Julius, I want to make sure that the things that I, I want people to get out of this book are everything that was ever cool about a muscle car or a custom van or like that hot wheel that you had or the slot races or the coolest right. toys that, that you ever had, something like that. Yeah. I, and, and I need to find a way to get that across being 52 um julius is a great guy he's young he's a he's a young uh young father but that's basically it like all the coolest toys that you ever had i need to be able to take what you thought was cool about that and apply that to these characters because i need to make cars a part of it Right, and, you know yeah. what I mean. I need to know. Oh, like, there's some. I, I I see these panels where there's going to be a giant spread of a parking lot full of hot rods, antiques, and things like that. And I, I just in my head, I imagine this these these word balloons that are all just like stuffed together uh, with people throw, with like little things in there about the banter that nobody really cares about that just has to do with like compression ratios. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Line, line, yeah, yeah, yeah. like gear shifts and things like that. Right, like like, like uh, classic car enthusiasts. <laughs> yeah, just right? that. Just, just I, I want to be able to get the din. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of being in of being in uh, that uh, situation uh, somehow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But he's he's over he's over in California. I know I know he knows what a lowrider is. <laughs> well, everybody knows what a lowrider. Yeah, is. yeah, but um. But you're, um, I'm, I'm, I want to say, I'm honestly, I'm a little, I'm a little upset that this thing isn't further along than, than, than it is. Yeah, people me are, too. People are really missing out on this. this I'll, is a, I'll survive. I'll, 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 I don't, I need, <laughs> look, I want the other two. <laughs> I, I mean, you let the, this is a great place. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't kidding when I said, like, when you get to the end of a, when you get to the end of a comic book or a chapter, I mean, you really know how to end it. Well, yeah. I like mean, one of the hardest things about writing a joke is knowing how to end that skit. You know what I mean? Course. It's knowing how to end it. And and, and there's a, there, those cliffhanger moments at the end of every one of these things. And I'm I'm at the end of one. Damn it. Yeah, I know. And, and now these other people are going to be responsible for me knowing what happens next. But, but you see, that's pulp storytelling. That's old school pulp storytelling. And I am a pulp man to the core. Yeah. I love that stuff. I love that style of storytelling. Robert Howard. Robert E. Howard, uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs in particular. Mm -hmm. The big, you know, it's interesting because it's like you put something out and you're hoping that people are going to get it. 
but then you're also curious if they're going to get certain things, right? Yeah. Like for me, the, the thing that I think only one person ever got is that basically what the story is, it's Tarzan in reverse. Hmm. That's it. Right. Yeah. And I'm a well, big yeah. Tarzan stand. And so instead of a human that's being raised by apes, you have an yeah. ape that's being raised by humans. Right. In the old West. This that you ha you have this here. And let me see. Oh no, it's not in this one. I think it's is it the big gun? Wherever you've got the his um um Chillblane. Is that his name? Yes. Lord Chillblane, yeah. Lord Chillblane, um, where he has that jungle room. Yes. So, yes. And I imagine it's a lot bigger than you can fit on a, a panel of a comic book. Um yes. I'm just curious, just for myself. Yeah. How close was I to where those ideas might have come from? I don't know. Did you guess? Okay. I guessed that um, what it was was at first when Lord Chilblain says that he moved his whole thing there brick by brick. Yes, which was a real thing, which was like there were actually uh, – uh, Well, the, the Casa Loma in Toronto is an example. Right. There were evidently the, these stories called Nat Natty Bumpo, right? And uh -huh. I guess these yeah, were like uh, dime novels or something like that. Yeah. And they were ridiculously popular in England. And so you had uh, members of the landed gentry who were like, you know what? Screw it. Let's move to Texas. Yeah. And would move to Texas and bring their ancestral homes with them. Yeah. Right. I remember that. People like, so people like Chilblain, <laughs> they actually existed. But when it's when he had it's and so I have moved my ancestral home here brick by brick from the old world to the new that my ancient bloodline should draw fresh nour nourishment from its virgin soil, you vampire. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> I yeah. was like, man, you really nailed it. Yes, that's exactly but, what he is. That's exactly what he is. Uh, more metaphorically speaking. This I gotta get back up there. I mean, he's a you know he's a freaking arms dealer. This. Jungle room. Yes. Okay. He's in the middle of the desert. Yes. Okay. That to me smacked of okay, um, a dune. Dune. Nope. Yeah. Cause they had in, in the book. I mean, that's, there not, was, that's not where I got the idea anyway, but go ahead. Yeah. Well, I mean, they had like um, um, palm trees that they made sure that they got watered, even though like water is so scarce on the planet. Right. But in the, I believe it's in the book. I'm not sure. I can't remember if it's in the Denny Velenu version, but that there is a room of vegetation and things like that in the palace when they move to Arrakis. There's there's an area where it's like this. You know what? Uh, that that's interesting because I I don't remember that from the novel, and I haven't seen the new film. Yeah. Uh, actually, where I got the idea for that was from an episode of The Avengers. Really? Yes. Where there was a guy who had a no, what the British one? Yes, with okay. uh, uh, Steed, Steed and uh, Emma Peel. Yes. And yeah. you know, and I, and, I, and, I, and I, oh God, I love that show. It's 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 so much fun, and it, it holds up very nicely. Um, but yeah, it was like, and I forget what aspect of it that was there, but there was a guy who was like very into Africa. And so he had like a greenhouse that was growing uh, like an African, African mm -hmm. plants. Right. Yeah. And so I thought, well, gee, what if I just took that and just blew it up like right. 20 times in size? Right. Right. Like James Bond villain style shit. And uh, there I had my, I, I, I had my, I, I had what my, it was. I had my hunting scene. I had uh, and uh, and an ultimate confrontation. But I do like that hunting scene, man. That's thank you. That's very much like um, oh, what, what am I thinking of? It's like that scene in uh, Rambo too. Oh wow! Where they just yeah. comes out of nowhere and yeah, 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 grabs guys. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, what was I watching just the other night? I, I managed to uh, oh, wow. uncommon valor. Oh wow! Like way yeah. back in the eighties, you remember that oh, one? Yeah, like yeah. Fred Ward's character was doing the same thing, hanging a sign around everybody's neck. You're dead. Yep. <laughs> You're dead. Yep. 
Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, some of the people in the drawn interiors are uh, some of the some of his victims. Because I oh, think really? I noticed, so yeah, yeah, yeah. People that 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 buy the um, the drawn in tears, they love getting killed. <laughs> Especially love getting killed. That's yeah. good, man. I have to. That's that's a good one. Yeah. This. Um, oh, this here. This is the Preston's able able hands. But this here, where he sees this stuffed and mounted gorilla. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Greystoke? Uh, no. You ever seen that one with the Christopher Lambert from way yeah, back? Yeah, 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 the, yeah. That if that was an inspiration for that moment, it um, it um, was something that worked its its way in subconsciously. Like I wasn't. Well, thinking. no, that's that's I mean that's all. <clears throat> um, because awesome. mind you, I keeps it real. Yeah, like, right. I'm not. I'm not. Cretan Tarantino, I'm not Rob Zombie. If somebody's like, "Hey, did you steal this from that?" I'll be like, "Yeah." Well, no, that's no, it, there is no such thing as that. And and I heard somebody say it that there's no such thing as an original idea, just an undiscovered way of plagiarizing someone else. And I honestly think that plagiarizing is too heavy a word because it that's is. It like is. outright theft. But you don't. Um, you're always going to be inspired by something that you. I mean, we're all products of our environment and our influences and things like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I'm trying to um, do a character that is so derivative of so many different things that it becomes its own belief yes. base of of whatever. Exactly. You know? Exactly. What you want to do? What, what I try it's a, to do? It's it's a twist. Yeah, I mean, I think of Six Gun Gorilla as a stew, right? Sure. And I'm taking the things that I loved as a kid, which were like, you know, giant monkey movies like King Kong and Mighty yeah. Joe Young. And of course, I love Planet of the Apes. Mm -hmm. I was obsessed with apes as a little boy, right? And I have a, I have a friend who is his whole thing is gorillas. Like he's always asking me to put gorillas on his bike. Every time I've awesome. painted anything on his bike is gorilla. Yeah. Well, gorillas are fucking awesome. What's not to love about gorillas, right? right. And, but I also, you know, I, I mind you, I love westerns. I mm -hmm. love horror films. I love high fantasy. There are a lot of different genres that I look forward to working in. And it was never my intention. If I had my druthers, uh, so to speak, I would be just writing straight up horror. But what I discovered I'm good at is taking a really kind of a silly premise and telling a serious, serious story with it. That's just my niche that I fell into. Yeah. And uh, this was a story that wrote itself in my head uh, very, very quickly. I mean, it was literally. Really? Uh, yeah. Uh, because I remember I was browsing a, and this never happens, right? So don't ever wait for, for something like this to happen. Um, I was browsing a, a website on golden age heroes and i saw the title six gun gorilla and then i discovered like i couldn't read it because it was out of print and mm -hmm. i went on a drive to uh like get my favorite junk food which is fish and chips right is it? and yeah and by the <laughs> time i pulled into the parking lot of the restaurant i had the entire story i don't okay. mean all the details sure well, like, yeah, the basic i had plot. the first act second act third mm -hmm. act i had the villains Everything just went boom, 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 boom. Is uh, what's never the, happens? What's the Italian guy's name? Oh, oh, uh, oh, oh, um, you're, you're talking about um, your character in the book, and I can't remember it either. Giuliano, Giuliano, Gi okay. Giuliano did, you, did you did you have basic characters figured out on that drive? Oh, yeah, yeah, <clears throat> okay. Uh, and he's kind of a, <clears throat> a combination of two Italian, um actors that were very prominent in uh westerns in the uh late spaghetti season. westerns yes uh, i that's kind of figured that it was it's that's why i said that you can take the western out of the spaghetti but you can't take the spaghetti out of the western well i also wanted or the character to be in it yeah I, but i also wanted that character to be an immigrant right sure because in the old west it's like one of the things that you've seldom hear in westerns are accents right but meanwhile it was a place full of accents because you had people from all over the world. Yeah. Right. This is in the early days of America, you know, the melting pot. 
And so, um, not so far removed from, uh, or right about the same time as a leave. You don't put on a land rush and people not show up. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And um, he's so he's based on uh, uh, two actors: Terrence Hill, who is German and Italian, and uh, Giuliano Giuliano Gemma. And uh, you know, I sort of took elements from the two of them and created uh, one character that really, if it were a film, could be played by either of them. Yeah, yeah. And one of the things I, I wanted to um, to give him also as a nod and a, a little bit of, uh, you know, respect is that uh, he has a scar on his cheek. And I had to keep bugging uh, Adrian, make sure he's got that scar on his cheek. Make sure he's got that scar on his cheek, right? Because yes. these are little things. It's like regular, you know, the reader's not going to notice that they're there, but I'll yeah. notice that they're there. Yeah, um, that, that's um, that's one of the things I was curious about too. Was who played that side? Oh, has Razor Fist been through this? Do you know if he's looked at no. it? No. Because that thing that he just did the other day on on westerns, why they're important and making a comeback or whatever, I think he would really like this. Oh, I think he would like this. I think Eric July would like this. I yeah. think that your boy Zach would really like this. Well, I mean, while I'm reading the western, it was just yeah. like that one that one video that he did on westerns kept going through my head. Everybody who reads this likes it. Yeah, which I don't blows, know what's the uh, what blows my mind. You know. Yeah. And and when I say that, you know, that's not me being braggadocious. It's me being like really free. Well, you're more cool. surprised than you. Like, yeah, you know, with it, you know that it's good. You just didn't think that it would be as wide appealing as it is. No. I'd like it to be a much wider appealing, at least. Yeah, me too. Another, <laughs> uh, you know, another five thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah, exactly, or more. Yeah, uh, ultimately, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's I, I don't know I don't know what it is. It, it's it, it's the uh, p uh, uh, comic skate people. They don't they 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 feel very loyal to uh, to Indiegogo, and that baffles me. But there you go. It is you what it is. Book? You want the book? Now, yeah, do, you, do you have idea. do you have a website? Your own website? I did. I did. I did ha yeah. have a sixgungrill.com, but the guy that was uh operating it for me who later mm -hmm. uh threatened to uh cancel me uh even uh take me to court because uh i went cg right how do you take uh, someone in court because i don't know i don't know what he was well, saying uh, right? but uh so, no, i just mean like your own personal site yes and mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. Well, I did. I don't. Okay. I, I don't now, right? Okay. So I had sixgungorilla.com. This asshole let it lapse, and mm. or let and uh, it ended up belonging, I think, to like a Korean dentist or something like that. Have you ever um, thought I'm about? I'm probably gonna do a two. Uh, probably gonna do a uh, a um, twofistedcomics.com or something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Because also I want to do, and next year I'm gonna have probably three com comic books coming out that. Mm -hmm aren't six gun gorilla because as much as i could do six gun gorilla comics for like the rest of my life i think there's other uh, stuff though i don't want to just be like the gorilla guy i want to do that high fantasy book i want to do like that mad max italian style book i want to do i've got like a whole bunch and so the thing that i'd like to do after this is i'd like to do um uh, Two-Fisted Comics Presents, which will be 10 pages of one story, 10 pages mm -hmm. of another. Yeah. It wouldn't be, uh, you know, an anthology, but not uh, connected. Yeah. You kind of, right? Are you talking about maybe going to um, uh, doing the Pops thing where maybe you're getting talent from other uh, you know, places they want to do oh, yeah. a small story and put it in there? and Exactly. Let let me give the readers ten pages of this, ten pages of that. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, varying. Yeah, you know, right. Maybe maybe you know, ten to fifteen pages being like the average. Yeah, and just see what vibes with people. Hmm. And, it'd be cool uh, to see it. It'd be it'd be cool there. to see that happen. I Maybe put not. I put a link in the private chat so that if you want to check out Skyster Cloud because they're supposed they they are um they're they're less expensive okay. than a lot of hosting a lot of hosting services and like i was saying before my 
mine is very graphics heavy. It's got a lot of moving parts and stuff, but it loads up pretty fast. If you want to see, I can show you. Absolutely. All right. I'm just going to go from here real quick and you'll see, because before this would, this would have taken about, I would have had to wait at least twice or three times as long for that to happen. Wait, hold stuff. Okay. It moves along pretty quick. Yeah, it sure does. Yeah. And you've got, I mean, that's very graphics heavy. Yeah. There's a lot of it too. I mean, just a ton yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's dude, that's tight. Um, I can I honestly I could not believe the difference between what I what I did have and and what and what they were able to give me. It's really I mean, I'm I'm not being paid or anything like that, but no, I do the same thing. If I like a service, mm -hmm. like I'm always talking about uh, uh, Comics Wellspring and Greco. Yeah, so we're easy. Uh, I I could get those people on the phone like that. They answer emails like that. I'll and be talking to you about that later because I'm either I'm either going to do. I, I mean, I'll I'll look into that. But like one of my customers, uh, used to own, but now his son owns and runs it. Is a full service print company, like right up the road. And I was showing him, you know, some comic books and graphic novels and stuff. I'm like, you guys can do this. It goes, oh, yeah, we can do that stuff. Oh, hell yeah. I'm like, well, if it's somebody that you know, and I mean, a lot of most of the stuff that I have done around here is it's, it's local just as a matter of <clears throat> you meet a lot of people when you're, you know, doing car painting and pinstriping and stuff like that. Right. The right. trucking company. You right. know, that's who's, that's who's, he, his, one of his family members is an ex excavation. They're going to be digging that big hole in my yard. Right. You know, so it's, that's usually how it works out. But, you yeah, know, yeah, if, yeah. if it's, if it sucks, then I'll be trying to get it from somewhere else. Well, this is also why it's important that when you're working with other people, mm -hmm. be easy to work with. Oh, no, yeah. Not just that, be fun to work with. Right. Yeah. Right. Like, for instance, uh, the, the, um, my friend uh, Adam Lawson hired, hired um, Preston for something. Yeah. And I was just like, I was like, uh, like, oh, really? Oh, that's awesome. You're going to have fun working with that dude. Yeah, right. That's what you want to hear. That's what you want to hear. You want, when people use your name, that's what you want to hear. Uh, yeah, it's just like a uh, cool, cool frog says the first thing that he says when he comes in. Just oh well, yeah, good vibes. Good vibes. Good vibes. Good yeah. vibes. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know when I'm when I when I say peace and love at the end of a stream, I really I really do mean that. You know. Yeah. Uh, right. There, uh, there's as uh, you know, old old punk rock me would be very very pissed off at current like a. You're such a square. Uh, well, no, I'm just such a hippie, man. Yeah. You know, I just turned into like a God. I turned into a hugger too. Well, I mean, it was, this is usually what happens is. Um, you know, when you're when you're younger, trying to figure out exactly how the world is supposed to work, you end up fighting against it when there's yeah. really no way to do that. It's I've tried to I try to tell my kids that you're not supposed to get the world to conform to the way that you do things because right. it's never going to work. It's an it's it's a pointless fight. It's up to you to figure out the speed and direction at which the whole thing flows. And I don't mean conform. No, you know, but there no. is a certain no, speed and direction. There's a certain speed and direction that you have to go before you can start. It's just like you were saying before, you got to have those rules before you can bend and break them. Absolutely. And, and that's, you know, kind of what you're, uh, my version of that, you know, everybody, everybody rebels, everybody bangs their head against the wall. And I think a lot of times they, they rebel and start banging their head against the wall just so that they know where those limits are. Right. You know, but, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, to, yeah, to a large degree. Yeah. But yeah, I used to be a very negative person. I didn't like people. I really didn't. It wasn't no, uh, until I still about. Don't. <laughs> well, for, I, I like I like individuals. Somebody had said it. Was it? I think it's somebody had said it um, yesterday. I, whatever. I'm getting old. I can't remember. Um, that they only uh, they're only good for about uh, three to four people at a time. But after that, right, they just start getting stupid. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, what, what I'm talking about is uh, genuine love for the, like, the rest of the human race. Mm -hmm. And that's not an easy thing. But yeah, you can have a certain degree of love 
even for the guy that's tailgating you, even mm -hmm. to the for the person that's like riding your ass at the well, yeah, there's that like benefit that of the way. doubt thing because I've been that person in the car driving a, right. a you know driving an expected mother to, mother to the hospital or or whatever right. the, the emergency right. happens to be. I cut my finger off and I'm not waiting for the ambulance. GTFO, my right. way. Right. <laughs> you, and, know? Yeah. you give people the benefit of a doubt and you realize that you know. Most people want to be good. Yeah. Most people want to do the right thing. It's just they're messed up and they're confused. And I mean, look at the society that we live in. That's, you know, uh, that's Godless. mentally sick, it's physically God. sick, yeah. spiritually sick. It's, it's just a sick society, right? So yeah, people, yeah. people are going to come out a little fucked up from that. Yeah. And so you try to cut them a little, a little, a little bit of slack and just making the effort. Is yeah, I, I remember there was there was a guy that I used to work with who um, he was one of the more standoffish people that I'd ever been around. But I had to interact with him because our 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 jobs had a lot to do with each other. And um, I think I just said that the one day I'm like, you know, some people you just got to read through the instruction books twice. Yeah, you yeah. Know, just, you, you, some some people need more. Some people need more patience. Some people need more um you know like understanding or whatever and i i said it in search uh, in, a, in a certain way be, because i mean we really got along great after that right you know right. it's not always the case but um it did make life a lot easier yeah what did you it know. for me was when i discovered uh my uh, depression bipolar support group right because i uh -huh. i've had a, uh, a mood disorder since i was a little kid right and you know really bad anxiety really bad depression and i was a hot mess when i uh when i found this group i wasn't looking for a support group right i was just yeah. looking for a doctor i'm like i was like let me go there and they'll tell me everybody in the area because there's gonna be people there who've seen everybody yeah and, and get me like a real doctor that's a healer and not just a pill pusher and what happened was I walked into this room full of people and I'm just like oh god oh, man these people are so normal and you know, I got nothing in common with these people. And then I would get into a room with them and suddenly realize I had a lot of a lot, lot in common mm -hmm. with with these people. And that, you know, all even though you had this vast wide variety of different people, we all had the same bugaboo. We all had the same demon. And it just like it led me to uh having compassion for people that I normally would be like, uh, you know, like yeah, and I, I so normy. Yeah, you no. Know? Well, and then like social media is just an extension of that. It's a lot it of easy. It's it's the the same thing that allows you to get pissed off at the person who's you can only see the back of their head above the driver's right. seat in front of you. Yes, is the same thing that allows you to get pissed off at somebody because they're over there on that side of Twitter. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. And it's depressing. It's, it's not just out of sight, out of mind. It's out of sight out of hearts yeah you know? it's very much very much so and what's what's the great tragedy and um, i'm one of the um, worst offenders too yeah but I you're like, I'm like i've got a big vocabulary and i'm gonna use everything of it on you right now like how come you can only fit this many words in twitter gd it yeah, yeah. well I, you know, look twitter and, and facebook they're toxic as fuck mm -hmm. and we use them to build our brands and you have to have the right relationship with the platform, right? Like, yeah. And not because I, I got into my first, I got my first Twitter rage mob because of that Superman thing I did, you know, where he's basically getting uh, bent over a chair and reamed up the. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. The rebar, right? Yeah, and I, yeah. And yeah, a lot of people didn't like that. And I can't imagine why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I replaced, uh, you know, I uh, the uh, the word balloons and everything, and I put like this SJW's head over like the general's head, yeah. <laughs> right? And it was funny because I was doing this, you know, just to take the piss. But then I actually found myself getting emotional, mm -hmm. and, and and you know, uh, 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 and evidently I, you know, I posted this thing and it got noticed, and then it got noticed, yeah, and. I had my very first SJW uh, lynch mob. Now, how did you feel about that? You're like, oh my god, I finally graduated from just one right, pesky, right, it's like a degree, yeah, right? one, one pesky shit poster to uh, which is all I've ever gotten. 
Right. And, and the only reason I got it is because I interacted with it. Right. Yeah. And so none of these people were interested in having a good faith discussion. Yeah, no, exactly. Right? I don't know. You know, I don't know if they were bots. They certainly acted like robots, but that's the thing with these people. They do act like robots. Right. <clears throat> and they are very uh, sort of mechanical. And so I was getting into it with these douchebags for like a half an hour. And then I noticed I had this sick feeling in my stomach. Mm -hmm. And what that what was that sick feeling? It was anxiety. And yeah, I was like, exactly. Why well, that's what the, that's yeah, that's what the block button is for. Yeah, and that's yeah, and it was like I was like two things. First of all, I was like, why am I doing this to myself? Block, yeah. block, block. There's block, so block, much block, yeah, block, there's block, yeah, block, block, what a waste right? of time. And then I was horrified to think that there are people that live in that place. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. I knew to fucking boop, slam on the brakes. Like, yeah. like, dude, what are you doing? Yeah. This is unhealthy. I'm out. Exactly. And there's people that just that's that's their life. And Maybe what's the what what's the um uh the phobia about going outside? Is that agoraphobia? Yes. Maybe they are all agoraphobic and they only their only interaction with the outside world is through that. Well, I think there's a lot of uh, unmanaged uh, mental illness that oh, yeah. uh, that, that, that is uh, <laughs> showing. Yeah, you yeah. can imagine in in the, in the future, this device is going to look at your, um, you know, the way that you interact with things, and it will be able to automatically manufacture the pill that you need and pop it right out of the bottom where you plug the phone in for for power. Well, you're like, here, take this Soma and right, you right, right, get right. off the phone. <laughs> I mean, look, I, look, I'm, I'm on, med, I, I'm on meds myself. Right. Yeah. And I don't, and what do they do? They adjust the serotonin levels in my brain mm -hmm. and, but it's not a cure. It's, it, it's a tool that enables me to do the things I need to do to get better and yeah, stay, it's um and stay healthy. Crutch is a bad word. Um, it's um it's a tool. It's a stool. You need yeah. to reach this. Yeah, and, and you know, like you need to reach this whatever the um the thing that you need to do in your head. You need it's like being uh, too short for this. Oh, right, you right. Get on the stool now. You can reach it. Right. It's not like you know because some people think think that uh that psych meds are like like soma. Right, mm -hmm. that they're just designed to dope you up and make you ah oh, just happy with the way that everything's are. Yeah, you know that's that's that that's not the case. I, I know uh, that there's a but, big like thirty year study that the uh, British Journal of Medicine or something did on SSRIs. Yeah, and what 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 they found that they were uh, l less effective than people were led to believe, but not to say that they aren't effective, but that um, they're more effective in fewer cases and that for other people, it might be uh, even more useful as a placebo than what the actual medicine is right. able to do. I can't remember the, I, I had the link and I sent it to, I sent it to a couple but it was, this was like oh, a month or month or hey, two months ago. Well, right now there's good. There's, there's a big conference that's going down. Cause I used to work in the mental health. Uh, yeah. Field. Right. Yeah. And lo I'm looking at, at getting back into it now. Um, there's like a big so you 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 uh, stay abreast of like you know all of the uh, developments and technology and you know st studies and all mm -hmm. that crap. Right? right. And there's a big conference going down related to using magic mushrooms to treat depression yes. which there seems to be growing. i've been seeing yeah dosing uh with the psilocybin dosing yeah. dosing I that out in certain to um yeah no i have been. i think um that there there have been um um magic much for for ptsd yes yes yeah. right which is wonderful because i'd much rather take <laughs> something that comes out of the ground yeah something that's like from pfizer or uh eli lilly yeah, if it's organic, don't panic. Yes, ex exactly. Yeah. But at the same exactly. time, but at the but at the same time, everything that can be used can be abused, and of vice course. versa. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Naturally, <clears throat> but, um, naturally. Um, you know. Yeah. Well, you weren't on that when you were writing this. 
you yeah. are on regular you are on regular gray matter yeah well, gray I mean, matter stuff it, um it's it's funny because like i finished all those scripts like years ago yeah Right, and so they're just sitting there, and now that like you know, Preston's going to be doing the ninth issue, hopefully, mm -hmm. if if the, if uh, this campaign succeeds, then uh, I'm gonna, I'm, you know, I'm going back now, and I'm you know, doing rewrites. That's to say, I'm not the person that wrote those scripts like six years ago. Yeah. Right. So now I'm looking at them with new eyes, and I'm like. You Do you know, think that's going to mess up, mess with your continuity? Not at all. No. Okay. Not at all, because I've got the the the, the story. I don't, I don't mean the continuity of the story itself, but I mean like um, the 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 feel of it. Not at all. No. Not at all. No, because uh, th that for me is uh, effortless. I'm happy to say, uh, and once again, it's about story structure for me. Mm -hmm. It's something that you can always fall back on that's reliable yeah you know um i'd like to th you're making me want to get a hold of julius <laughs> well, dude, <laughs> like, th this is a book that i highly recommend it's called the seven basic, seven basic plots. plots by christopher booker it's how a in uh, the world how in the world show me that again there it is Christopher Booker, The Seven Basic Plots. Oh, oh, um, okay. Why we tell stories, it's um, it's it's subtitled, right? Yeah. So basically, he takes a Jungian approach, like I was talking about Jung before, crazy about Jung. I think he was right about so yes. much so much stuff, and he applies it to storytelling and uh, comes to the conclusion, his theory is that there's only seven basic plots, and that even the plots that uh, maybe subvert those plots are still inspired by those seven basic plots. Right. And, well, and then they, call, they can all be brought back to... Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, really, to be perfectly honest, only about half of this book is worth reading. I right? hope so, because that's a thick book. It is, it is. And, I mean, I did read the whole thing and found it very entertaining, but uh, he lays down the basics in like the first half of the book, and the rest is basically him just repeating himself in a very inter in a very inter in interesting way. You're making me but, want something else up, and I'm not sure. I think it's 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 long it's it's along those lines. Um, it is a it's one of the the great what are the they called? Theory? Well, I they're they're they're, um, they're like college theory. courses. That's another good one right there. Oh, uh, which? Yeah, if they okay. The writer's journey by uh, Christopher Vogler. Yeah, that this is also uh, uh, very um, useful, like uh, nuts and bolts. Okay. See, and that's why um, it was um, Gabe. El Taib. Yes. And somebody had asked, um, what is the what is the single best book that I can get that has to do with um, visual storytelling? <clears throat> yeah. And uh, he said this one. So I've been uh, trying to absorb this. Uh, and, there's, and there's two of them. It is it is really good. Um, and a lot of uh, like the different moods and stuff that you get yeah. from lighting and, and things like that. Yep. One of my biggest issues has always been trying to draw and display uh, everything where right. um, I will want to illustrate something in the same lighting so that you can see all the detail. And, and every time that happens, just like, well, yeah, but now that's not the right mood. Right. You know, sometimes you need to have half the face missing Mm -hmm. Because it's, um, and I should just like bookmark this permanently, right? You know what I mean, and like yes. especially down here. Yep. Like if you're film in, noir yeah. style lighting, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that means um, uh, I'm. Whenever I read something like that, and I'm sure the same thing happens to you when you're reading about like how to write is, oh yeah, these are my tendencies. I need to get out of that habit or stop the. Stop thinking that by blocking everything here out in black that I'm being lazy. Right. And you know what I mean? That I yeah. should be showing all of this detail somehow, some way. 
but yeah. um, but but then one of my my favorite band, um, uh, Big Wreck, they're up in in Toronto. Uh huh. Um, the creative force behind that band, Ian Thornley's an amazing songwriter, like total package. Um, he says that he is he, when he's talking about composing songs and stuff that he leaves out versus stuff that he puts in. Oh, it's like yeah. it's all about what the song needs. Yes. And and um, and I and it's hard for me to do that visually just because you know it's like I feel like I'm still in class. I'm still in the artistic weight room. Right. And I but, still need to just make sure you get all the details in there because if you you know if you don't, then you're, <clears throat> which is what I like about this book because it's it's especially like this this cowboy right here i love the way his the way he's standing he's got his hand on the on the belt the way his legs are positioned yeah Asian and, and this arm here is is foreshortened and it's not overly uh detailed yep okay so like as a for instance i keep and then I'm going to, I'll, I'll I'll go through this and then we can watch the video and I'm going to have to wrap up here a little bit, but there yeah. is, well, then, uh, by I the just, way, thank I, you for having me on brother. Oh, no, you know, I, I, I love talking to you, man. You're, you're, like, uh, they, when they, you're, you're, what do they say? Still waters run deep. I never understood that one. How does it still waters don't run at all? Still waters are still. Still waters run deep. You never heard that one? No, I have. You're right. That is yeah. kind of like a bull bullshit uh, analogy, isn't it? Or uh, where is Afro's top pictures? Uh, oh, um, sorry, sorry. I'll get there. I, I I need to know my own computer here. No, that's uh, don't yeah. worry about it, dude. Yeah, I'll get there for crying out yeah, loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and, and the key is to cease giving a shit, and then you can relax. And then once you relax, then you can do your job much easier, or whatever it is that you're trying to do. This one is more this easier. one is weird because it used to be right there in the side. You know what happens? It's like you know you do a um, you do an update, and then everything changes. And it's like, whose computer is this? Mine or yeah, I know. the person who just updated it. Pictures, desktop images. Okay. Um. Yes, I do want to open 73 items. Stop this screen real quick and share because this is what I put this stuff up on my on my desktop. So that yeah. so that um, I'm constantly looking at other people's uh, stuff, especially if I hear like um so, uh, like an artist thrown out, like, you know, like, of course, somebody's going to say Dale Keown, you know, somebody's going to say, uh, um, like a Sandoval. I was, I was introduced to whenever I was looking, this guy right here, his stuff mm. just, it, it blows me away. I was talking about movement before. Yeah. How if a comic book artist is doing, is, is about their storytelling yeah. and how, if they're doing comics right, the images move. Yes. Or even like one image, there's a lot of motion here, just Absolutely. right there. There in and um, intimidation and feeling. So and, and I'm always looking at pencils. Pencils is the thing that I like because that's where I think the most the most of the feeling comes from. I agree. But I just have this stuff rotating through on my on the desktop of my oh. computer. See, I'm such a black and white stan. Like all of this stuff. If I was the writer, I'd be like, "Can we just leave it like this?" I know that's the thing. That's that's where um, you know, whenever I start inking my stuff, I have to be more judicious on where I put the blacks and 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 whites and stuff like that. It's um. Well, anyways, I mean, um, you, you can always use the approach that Preston used, which is uh, inking with uh, the pencil. Because uh, you oh, know sure. there's, there's no inks in, in the uh, in the last issue of, of mm -hmm. Six Gun, and I think I, I think it looks beautiful. Or, or and one of the things that amazes me about the way that Ethan does his stuff, like that, he just doesn't collect rust. He's the he's when I was talking before about how you don't pick the thing up for a while and then it becomes a little bit of a fight once you start using it. He's going from blue plotting to ink, which I think has a lot to do with. Um, um, being able to crank out as much work as possible, especially if you're working in mainstream comics because the deadlines are tighter. Oh my God. Yeah. Right. Oh, shit. And it, oh, shit. Also, 
gives him more time to do like videos and things like that. I'm imagining, but the way that he can go, th it's almost like this, that, that one Korean artist that was a Korean or Chinese or Japanese. He just passed away a couple of days. Oh, he was Korean. Yeah. Him yeah. going from nothing to inks. Okay. That's, I mean, what is Ethan's what one step away from that? I'm going to do some quick blue plot stuff here. And then I'm just, and then, you know, go to ink. So God bless you. You can do that. That's, that's great. Right. I'm still, you know, what, what do you call it? I'm, I'm still like washing out the previous layer and then tightening it up a little bit more. And then try, I'm trying to get away from that because it is a, an, uh, an efficiency of work thing. Right. That, um, you know, I need to get it. It would be like, you know, you're, if you're going to be writing like, you know, Robert E. Howard and you right. need to move like this. Yeah. John Delaro said the same thing about um, I, the one book that he um, I listened to that he wrote, um, just not justified, but it but it was it was a faster moving thing, and he right. had said something about um, the way that the expanse has been written, and those books take a while to get through, even when you're just listening to them. But I'm like, yeah, but there's so much texture I don't want to miss out on, and that's one of the things that I really like yeah. about those books. The um, the inner dialogue of the characters and stuff, and 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 uh, it's a little bit more fleshed out. But I'm probably a little prejudiced. I've dug that show since the first episode. Uh, you know, I've still never seen it. You should see it. It's I know. It's I, really keep, really just... I mean, to the extent that there might be any wokeness in there, I always and it because it's not even that there's there's wokeness, but it's the authors are taking the trajectory of how we are as people and just moving in the next logical direction. Right. So that your interaction between the sexes is just really blurred and understood. You love who you love or like who you like or do right. who you do and, and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not a thing that they, that is, that is harped upon. It's right. Just, that's how the world is now. Right. That's it. Um, uh, the Chucky series, which I, I had no intention of watching the Chucky series. I was like, whatever, right? Zero interest. And then somebody was telling me, you know, you should really check that out. It's actually really good. And I love the first season. I love the first season. You, are and you saying Chucky or Chuck? The ch uh, Chucky. You know, about Child's Play. Uh, really? Franchise. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, uh, by the way, that's the only franchise where every single installment is written by the original author, by the same author. Oh, good. Yeah. And um, Don Mancini. And I, I was like really very, very pleasantly surprised by how, how good that show was. And in it, the protagonist is this kid and he's gay. But it's not like that's not his defining characteristic. Yeah, that's a lot of times that's all anybody's really asking for is just, can you please give me more than just one dimension and one motivation? Right. And so in that story, he's very, uh, very much an outsider. And him being gay is something that's just once makes him even more of an outsider. Yeah. Or makes him feel even more uncomfortable in his own skin. Right. And the then it's that, the thing that you're supposed to sympathize with him over. Right. And um, then also it's dealing with the sexuality of children. Ugh. Uh -huh. Right? Yeah. Which kind of gives you this like, ugh, this icky feeling. Like <laughs> Which is, well, no. It's just kind of like, uh, l let the right one in, I think. Oh, that. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotcha. Right? Where you're just like, oh, yeah. The, like, you know, like, you know, kids can be sexual. And, oh. And it just kind of takes you into, into uncomfortable territory, which is something that horror should be doing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You love, in other words, like, what, what's going to get under your skin, right? That and easily it's like, does. That'll do that it. That easily does. That easily <laughs> yeah. does. And I thought, wow, he's doing this, like, in a really cool, clever, interesting way. Mm -hmm. Right? So it, it's, did you did you um did you, you like you've seen them all? I never watched any of the uh I never watched any of the uh, Chucky uh, movies. I, I've never been big on that franchise. I would recommend the first one. I would recommend Curse of Chucky. I thought was it was exceptional. I thought it was really good. Yeah, okay. like a genuine genuine horror film. And yeah. I really like the TV series. Uh, it's uh, certainly. I, I mean, I'm I'm watching the. Uh, 
the, the, the second season as it as it unfolds. I, I don't know that it needed a second season. What up, pops? What up, brother, man? This is what I usually end up doing to people. They don't show up until I'm like, all right, somebody says something about. No, no. Know, we've been on for like two and a half hours. I, and I was and playing. I'll, and I'll I jump was, in. <laughs> I was playing the replay of the Peter Gilmore Horror Club show on my channel. Gotcha. And I can't be in both places at once because the speakers would play both shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and right. If I mute the yeah. other show, then nobody would be able to hear the other show. Right, yeah. right, right. So, I mean, I right. had to wait till it was over. But as soon yeah. as it was over, I'm here. No, man, I appreciate it. I'm glad you showed up. Seriously, brother. There's my boy Brian. I got to be here for that. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've been – It's it's been a, a bit of a master class on how to get a decent book written. Well, I don't, I don't know about that. I don't, I don't. Well, look. Here's the thing. It's a good book. Shut up, Brian. Just what shut up. What Take makes this community so special is that you have a lot of people that are looking at the people that are coming in behind us and wanting to help out, right? And I personally feel that established creators in this space have a responsibility to uh, assist the people that are coming in behind us. Right? Yeah, and you and you, uh, you got to fertilize the ground and keep the keep the whole thing going. Do it. Without a doubt, without with, without a doubt, and you know it's cool for people to support the Kangs, but also to recognize that uh, this is very much a grassroots movement, and that uh, the people that were just names in the chats that are now throwing their hats in the ring that they are like the true spirit. Oh, I haven't. I haven't. I've never me, gotten. A, I've never me. gotten a bad vibe off of um, off of any anybody in Comic Skate. To tell you, I, I have, but I shan't name names. I mean, only like, <laughs> and, and, and there's been. I mean, there might have been like one or one or two times where you're you're on like a drunk stream or something like that, and then somebody gets a little bit too emotional about something. But right, it's like the thing that we were talking about before. Just you know, who knows why he's riding my tail just get right. over and take off right. you you get pulled over <laughs> exactly. um exactly. but yeah it's it, yeah but benefit of the doubt especially in this it, you know the way that we communicate now it's um like text yeah. is just terrible like you can't oh, see dude. facial and you can't see facial expression you can't hear vocal and no nuance dude no exactly. nuance whatsoever you know what i honestly and this is this is completely and totally serious if at least in the phone apps okay but in on in all of the apps but especially in the phone and like text if it was possible to use italics we would all be a lot friendlier to each other yes when you want to emphasize something and yes. you have to go with all caps just that little thing yes i agree <laughs> that little thing it's like why are you shouting at me, me. no i'm not Right, I'm using it for emphasis because that's the only way I can do that. Oh man, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I should have, I should have started this yeah, later. Now everybody's nobody. showing up. Jessica Reloaded's here. What up, Jessica? You, you can't respond to nobody. They think you're automatically angry, or, or you know, it's like you can't have a differing opinion without them thinking you're angry and mad. No. It's like, oh. no, I just don't believe that. Right, yeah. you know, I, it's like, and it's and, and it and it's so it, it reminds me of like why dogs and cats fight, right? It's right. because when dogs and cats don't get get along together, it's miscommunication because they because dogs don't speak cat and cats don't speak dog. So the dog comes running up on the cat saying, like, come on, let's play. And the cat's like, ah, what the fuck? And you know, swipes at them. Yeah. And then the dog's like, what the hell? Okay, now it's on like Donkey Kong, and then the next thing you know, they're fighting. Right. right? It's right. the human version of that. Uh especially something like Twitter, microblogging. Oh my God! It's, yeah, it's such you don't a have horrible idea. You, you don't have enough characters to to get your your point across or to get your idea out in a way that everybody understands the context behind it. There yes. just isn't in the 140 characters. It's not going to get your point across. Not in a reply. It's so not yeah. the place to argue. No, yeah. no, you and know? we all. You remember the, the case? Fun, <laughs> I mean, I don't know that she was the first person to get canceled. But one of the first victims or most public victims of cancel culture was this woman that was... Um, the one that uh, lost her job while she was on a plane ride to yes. Africa or something? Yes. Yeah. Right? 
because she made a joke that wasn't racist. It was a joke about racism. Racism. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. too nuanced. And that nuance didn't come across for a lot of people that saw it. And that's why when she landed on her plane, her life was over. Yeah. It's so crazy. Yeah. Insane. Insane. That's why, that's why to three or four people max. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> three or four people max, not a whole group. Yeah. No, it's, it's, let's, it, it, um, Let's it's check this. Good. I'm like I'm, I I hate to do it because we just had Jessica reloaded. Jessica reloaded is a great. Um, <clears throat> she's she's great on streams and stuff. She's um she likes to promote people a lot here. So oh, I'm gonna drop I, this in. I don't believe I've had the pleasure. I have not either, and I do the same thing. How can that be? I know, right? Well, I mean, it's like she likes to promote other people's channels and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm sh throwing the uh, link in for the book. Um, I've been littering Discord with it so that I can get it out to as many people as possible. Oh, thank you. And, and you know what? Can I just really quickly say, uh, times are tough right now. Not everybody can back all the books they'd like to. I can't back all the books that I'd like to for financial reasons. But one thing that never costs anybody a dime is just clicking and share a shout out yeah. yeah 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 clicking that share button right yeah yeah and because the biggest obstacle that we face as indie creators is exposure right just getting people to know that we exist yeah i know i'm gonna that's that's one of the things i'm i'm a little worried about because uh well who knows when julius told me when the time what what time my my book actually takes place in he yeah. goes 2024, and I'm like, it's probably going to take me a little bit longer to actually get this thing done. But um, that's what you get when you're you're doing your eight hour a day gig. Yep, most definitely. Um, most definitely. Slow and steady yeah, wins the race, man. What? Slow and steady wins the race. Yeah, right. Exactly. Ah, look. What's up? I know this guy. Nah, he's Elvis. Yeah, that guy's an asshole. <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> no, he's he's um he's got like fifteen followers. Remember when you said you had that like hate mob after when I yes. can only I could only earn one guy? Oh that's man. your guy? That's the guy, yeah. Man. He's he's probably the same guy on every channel with a different name. Yeah, probably. Oh just thank you, Susie. Susie just said Hi, something. Susie. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. You know, really that's is, one thing that will never get tired of. I can say having read all eight books and not being Brian. Yeah. Shit's bomb, yo. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Look, I never get I never get sick of hearing that. It always uh it always warms my heart. It always makes me uh always always uh grateful. Dude, grateful it's good that. stuff. It's it is, it's book. a great it is, it's a great book. Thank you. Thank for you. For real for realsies. I'm I'm really kind of wor wondering how it's going to um um, end out or if I mean are you going like balls out for like 10 more episodes or what are you going to do B? No well the, the the last two issues that's wrapping up the, uh, the first arc the first the... arc that's okay. wrapping up the uh, long days of vengeance okay. and am I going to do more six gun gorilla after this possibly you know I know that I'm don't want to hop into another six gun gorilla story I want to do other stuff so and then I'm not the gorilla guy but I could potentially write the, you know, I could see myself writing that character in that universe for ever. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what's wrong with being known as the gorilla guy. Well, uh, you, now, you know, hold um, let yeah. me, let me say why. Okay. We yeah. got the puncher yeah. guy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We got the frog guy. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with them. Being I see your able point. To identify you by what you draw. Yeah, you don't want those other guys being you thought of as I'm the gorilla saying? guy. Right. I mean, that's true. That book sucked. Oh, snap. <laughs> I've run it and I honestly could say, yeah, I kind of did. And it wasn't what it wasn't. It was uh, false, false advertising. advertising. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesse. Bait and switch. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, but anyways, like I, I said, I, I, I hate to do it. We've been on for two hours and 43 minutes. I'm going to have some splaining to do. <laughs> I wanted to put the put the video up one more time before uh, before I bail and make sure my family remembers that uh, I still live here. <laughs> go check this one out. Get the trade. Get nine and ten. Get caught up on what's going on. Because yeah, I got nine and ten. Good. It is. He's gonna go forward. So you know. Yeah, and yeah, if you have the road. first, 
if you have the first trade paperback that has the first six issues, there's a second trade trade paperback that you can back that has the last uh, four issues. That's going to have the last four yeah. issues because I would never double dip on y'all. Great. Yeah. Be, be nice to your backers, everybody. Let's check it out real quick. Fans come first. Without them, y'all ain't selling nothing. Ain't nothing but that. Yeah, I, just heard the, I just heard the rock utter that very phrase. It's true. So I'm 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 actually expecting some good things from this Black Adam movie. I uh, uh yeah I, I kind of think they already. Well, no, what I mean is so. I'm not totally were... divorced from the DC uh, uh movie universe as I am like like Marvel. I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. Well, uh, my problem was is I don't usually watch trailers, but now that I don't care about the movies, I kind of look at the trailers. And the best watch. part <laughs> of this movie is going to be the fact that he actually kills people. And they should not have put that shit in the trailer. No. And also, he should have been the first Shazam point. movie. That's why does I, everything have to be... And I liked the Shazam movie, too. That's, so That's a movie climax point. You don't put that yeah. in the trailer. You save that for... That's what brings people back to the movies. Yeah, they... Well, well I you're mean, getting look, that chill in the theater. That's what brings them back. Right, right, right. But they keep putting the, uh, the cart before the horse... With, with a lot of stuff, you know, uh, like like Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. It's just like, okay, this has to be like, you know, they were so eager to get to the Avengers. They were like, we want the Avengers yesterday. We're not spending 10 years or five years or however many years building up to that. We want that now. And it blew up, it blew up in their faces. But, uh, you know, um, I'm I'm curious. I'll I'll I'll, I'll watch it. I, will I go see it in the theater? I don't I don't know about that, but we'll see. You know, I mean, I, I definitely won't go see anything in the theater again. Man, Love and Thunder fucked that all up for me. <laughs> well, I was sitting next to my granddaughter. That was horrible, dude. That, horrible. This is why I love the Alamo Draft House. That's by me. Is it's like they're showing like old horror movies and old classic fl films. I'm just like. It's like, well, I'm going to see Phantasm. I know I'm going to love that. Yeah, right? that's usually what happens to me too. Even when I'm just clicking through on a on the on the TV, right? Sergio Leone. And I used to wonder why my grandparents would watch old black and white movies because they knew what they could count on it. You know, yes, yeah. yes, and it was good. They would come so, back mm -hmm. for more. That's yep. what I'm talking about. Yep, and like the and like the uh, the big theater chains. If they were showing Ghostbusters, ET, or like the the original Star Wars movies, the non fucked up versions, they'd be making mad crazy bank right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> non fucked up versions. Yeah, but <laughs> I guess it, it it just it it just like I don't know. It doesn't occur to them. Well, let's check the trailer out one more time. All right, brother man. All Thank right, you. Man. Sure. Thanks everybody in the chat and thank you pops and thank you Dave. Yeah. All right. I We've all heard the stories. We all heard the legends. Wyatt Earp, Doc Holiday, Billy the Kid. But there's a secret history to the West. One that seems too strange to be true, but, well, we all know what they say about the truth. Big ape, very big guns, throwing very big holes, very bad people. I think the world is finally ready to hear the story of the strangest, the most startling Western hero of them all. Six-Gun Gorilla, 
long days of vengeance. Mm-hmm. That's good, man. Did I? Uh, I think mute. I th oh, I didn't. I didn't mute him. No, I muted myself. There's background. Oh, okay. Right yeah, yeah. I, I, I do. I do the same thing. <laughs> like. Yeah, I mean, I I didn't do like the labor on that, but I um, did the storyboards and all that stuff. That's and, your you voice, know, though. Yeah, it's me trying to do my best attempt at Sam Elliott. And, you and almost falling you, short. You almost got it. You didn't quite take the uh, take your your yourself out of the voice altogether. Yeah, no, you can tell it was you. Yeah, yeah. can tell me nothing. <laughs> it is, man. Um, this is um, this is well worth uh, every red cent. It's probably worth more than more than that. I mean, I'm, oh, Shaw. Yeah. Well, no, seriously, it's a good it's it's a good book. I really like it. Thanks, brother. And I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to nine and ten. Get 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 your uh, get your ass out there and you know I did I'd keep streaming. In fact, I would take this whole thing right over to Pops's place. Well, I have to eat something, but I but so I, 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 mean, I am going to be grind. I'm, I am I do intend on grinding for the next uh, five days. Oh, and uh, what Susie said too about uh, you know uh, how they should be showing more foreign films in. Uh, and mainstream movie theaters, uh, but I, I don't know if people would go see that. You know, oh, sure. um, stuff coming out of India, right? Uh, 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 you know, not just uh, India, but also uh, South Korea. Mm -hmm. My God, South Korea has yeah, killed South it Korea's, for years. Yeah, I know. What, what was what was the one work of uh, of narrative uh, film that uh, really captured? Americans um attention and and uh and the last year it was freaking uh Squid Game. And uh, what Parasite yeah, was the best picture, wasn't it? Parasite? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and pa Chinese Parasite Chinese was cinema, the best picture. Yeah. And Chinese yeah. cinema, not so much these days because the censorship is so bad. But I loved yeah. Chinese cinema from like the 70s and the 80s and uh and maybe even the early 90s, but like nowadays it's it's like everything has to have some kind of uh uh, pro-Chinese, anti-Western uh, element to it. They, like, really crack down with the censorship. It's like watching a Marvel movie, basically. Yeah, it's it's weak. It's watered down. Yep. It's um, just like, um, did either of you happen to see, happen to catch Tom's new new song that he dropped yesterday? Whose new song? Tom McDonald. Yeah, I, that. Um, where did that show up? Y'all are sheep. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, Brian, you have to go listen to it, dude. It, oh, it, Tom McDonald. Oh, I know who you're oh, talking dude. about now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I oh, love that. Too. Uh, oh, is that tattoo he face? Peeled freaking yeah. layers off of everything in this tune, dude. It is. Oh, I love that dude. Oh, him and, him and Dax are like the he best. Went deep, uh, man, that dude needs that dude needs 24 hour protection. He went deep. Oh, oh I'll definitely check that out. Y'all are simple. Yeah, with the more accessible technology, it's gonna it's a lot easier to make better movies in places where uh budget's not necessarily a an issue anymore. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. People can uh shoot films on their on their phones. Yeah, yeah. Tell Doesn't me mean that, that everybody should, and it means that a lot of uh good stuff gets lost in the uh shuffle. Yeah. But you know, like a friend of mine says. You know, we're gonna know what movies are awesome right now, twenty years from now. Yeah, well, it's gonna take that long for taste to come back. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I gotta get, I got, I gotta get some noms, and uh, yeah. but yeah, I, I, I will probably be online uh, grinding for like the next uh, five days. Uh, yeah, I, I, I look I was forward going to, to it, ask man. you, Brian. Yeah. Do you want to um, come in? Tomorrow about four o'clock on Monday Madness because you know that's about when Rich goes to bed. Fuck yeah! And I still have another hour and a half of show to do after Rich goes to bed. Hell yeah, so, dude! Hell yeah! Um, I'll yeah, be I'll shoot you the link then by the four o'clock or so. Awesome! Cool. Great, yeah, Candid, man. Keep Candid. it up. Keep, All right, boys. I'm gonna up. get. I'm gonna get something to eat before I fall over. All right. All right. All right. Thanks, man. I'm, I'm, thank, <clears throat> thanks for coming out. You got, hey, thank you for having me, man. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace. All right. Peace. See ya. All right, there it is. 
Thanks for showing up, guys. I really appreciate it. Check out that book, Six Gun Gorilla on Zoom. Yeah, thank you, Susie. Um, I had a great time, learned a lot, and I will see you guys on the next one. I'm going to do a terrific show today, and I'm going to help people because I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me.